Did you know that Discord has a maximum of 10 people in a group chat? So what if you have more than 10 people? You have to create a server, something like this, right? You'd have to create a server and then you can chat to people through here. However, the thing is, servers don't have push notifications. And what, what I'm talking about as a push notification is if I just send a message here, you can see that I get this red message here, this red one, which is called a push notification. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be making a tutorial on how to write a Discord bot from scratch that gives you push notifications, right? So basically, every time you type a message, it's going to ping a certain role, right? Which is really helpful because a lot of the time, if you just have a server here, other people might miss your important messages, right? So I'm just going to send a message from my other account and you can see that it comes as a ping here. I'll send a couple other ones just to demo it. And then you can see that I have five push notifications here and you can see that that's there. So how is this achieved? Simply by a Discord bot that reads from a MongoDB database. So without further ado, let's get started. So what are the prerequisites for this tutorial here? So first of all, what we need to do is we need to download and install Node.js. So basically just come here, type in Node.js, go to download and just install the version for your system here. So basically I have downloaded the current version here, um, but you can use long-term support. There's no problem. They both will work here. And then just install this version for your system. Okay, so basically uh, you'll wanna install Git for your system as well because we will be using it so that we can push this to deployment. Okay, because we're gonna be going from scratch straight to deployment on AWS infrastructure, right? Uh, you don't have to use specifically AWS infrastructure. I've just used it for this tutorial here. So one more prerequisite is that please type in Visual Studio Code into Google and just download this here for your operating system. I highly recommend Visual Studio Code as your uh, code editor here. I have completed this project and I have pushed it to GitHub. So this link will be in the description below. However, for the sakes of this tutorial, I've also created a base template so that we can all code together. Okay, so I'll also put this in the video description below as well. So this will be the base template where you can build off of and just code along with me if you want to. Okay, so it also comes with a set of instructions of how to use it and everything. So I've just put that all there. So I'm just going to go to my coding, coding folder. I'm just gonna create a uh, Discord bot tutorial folder. Okay, so Discord bot tutorial. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is, uh, because I'm in Windows here, what I can do is I can just go CMD and just press enter. So that will pretty much create a uh, command prompt that allows me to be in the current folder. So how do I do that again? So make sure that you don't click on one of these folders here. Make sure you click in the empty space to the right over here. You see how my mouse is just on the right empty space? I click on that and it highlights this thing here. Then I can type in CMD and press enter. And yeah, you can see that I have opened a command prompt here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start off by pretty much pulling this thing here or cloning this, my code here, okay? So I'm just gonna click on this download button here. Once you're in the uh, link in the description below, I'm gonna make sure I'm on HTTPS and press this copy button here. So I, once I've copied that, I'm just going to go type in the following command, git clone, and I'm gonna right click so then I can paste and just press enter. Okay, so what you'll see now is you now have an extra folder here. So we want to basically um, open this in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go uh, show more options, open with code. Okay, so um, what we can see here is you'll see this all this, this entire directory here. Okay, so basically all the, all the code for the folder is in this source directory here. Okay, and a quick explanation here, the package.json, so these are the versions um, and the dependencies basically. So you can see that this one, we have these three packages here, which is Mongoose, which is for the MongoDB database. It's like a framework on top of normal MongoDB. We've got .env, which is used to read, like for example, this uh, env file here, right? And last of all, we also have, and this is just an example file here, so it isn't a really real file, but that's okay. Um, also we have this discord.js, right? So, which we need because we're using Node.js for Discord. Okay, and another thing I just wanna explain just real quick. So 
what is the code here that is already here? So basically, full credit for this code goes to under control. So this is an advanced command handler by under control. So what, what is happening here is we have these folders here. We have the events folder and we have the commands folder here. So this is for slash commands and this is for events. So what this is doing is at the start here, it'll use this event handler command. And all you need to know is it's just gonna go into every single one of these folders, the commands folder, and it's going to register all these commands here. So there's a command here, which is ban, and there's a command here, which is ping. Okay, so it just gives you the ping. And this one just gives you, um, it says ban, but it's not actually gonna ban any, anybody. So these are just some example commands. I've, I have a link to his video in the video description where he explains this whole uh, command handler. Let's get started with actually coding this. Is you wanna go to discord.com slash developers and applications. So you can see here that I already have these two applications here, but that's okay. So you'll have this applications page here. And what you wanna do is you want to click on new application. And I'm gonna call this YouTube uh, ping, ping everyone, why not? And I'm just going to agree there. I'm gonna press create. Scroll down to bot here. Also make sure to that all the privileged gateway intents are allowed here. So just allow this, allow that, and allow message content and just save this one here. Okay, so we wanna save all these privileged gateway intents here. So I'm just gonna go into bot here and I'm just gonna click on reset token and I'm just gonna go, yes, do it. This token here has been uh, generated. Okay, so this is for the, to the bot token. Okay, so don't show share this with anybody. Uh, I'm just going to be deleting this uh, after the video is done. So it's okay that I'm showing you here. And I'm going to create a new file. Okay, so I'm gonna right click, create new file. I'm gonna create a .env file here. Okay, so I'm just going to pretty much copy everything that was in the env example here. And I'm just going to paste it here into the, the actual end file. So you can see here, this first one here needs to be replaced with our bot token that we just generated. So let me just copy this token here and I'm just going to put it into here. So I'm gonna paste it over, I'm gonna press save. Okay, control S. Now, um, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna grab the um, OAuth here and let me just go to URL generator. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna click on bot here so make sure you've clicked on bot in OAuth2, bot. And now I'm just going to make this administrator just to make it easier on ourselves. Um, but if you if you know exactly what commands you have, for example, just for this bot here, I would just go, honestly, I would just go send messages, read message history, mention everyone. If there is an error, like you may wanna check if you, if you have uh, put in specific settings. For this one, I'm just gonna go administrator just to make it easier. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this URL here and I'm gonna put it into one of my test servers so we can start actually testing. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the Discord bot test server here, and I'm just gonna go and just press enter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click on this here, and I'm going to allow it into the server. Okay, and I'm gonna authorize and just bring it in. Okay. Okay, cool, perfect. So you can see that I've now got my Discord bot inside the server. We need the guild ID here. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the guild ID, turn on developer mode, is just click on this user settings here, and then go um, to advanced here, and make sure that developer mode is on here. This means that you can, like when you right click on this server here, you can copy server ID. So you'll have that option when you go right click, copy server ID. Okay, so that is the guild. So a guild is basically just the Discord server. Okay, so that's the ID there. And now the client ID is basically just if I right click on this bot here and I copy user ID, and I'm just going to paste it over this one here. Okay, so we don't need to worry about the MongoDB URI. So basically this one is gonna come later. So the purpose of this .env file is basically it has environment specific, like secret things that you don't want to uh, push to um, your uh, version control. Because if someone else saw this, they could use these uh, values to control your bot and do all kinds of bad things. That's why we use this .env file. And every time that we're referencing this thing here, so we're just going to reference it with, um, well, I actually can't find it anymore, but yes, here. So you can see we get, we're using require.env.config here, and we're just using this process.env.mongodb URI, right? So basically this one here is mongodb URI, and we're just connecting to that. Okay, so, now, 
what we're gonna do here is I'm actually going to comment this code here. So just one second real quick, just so that we can test that this works here. So I'm just going to, un so I'm gonna comment to all these lines here with the, with the async code about connecting to the database because we don't have a database yet, right? So I'm just going to comment that code out and I'm just going to uncomment. So this one was commented and I'm just gonna delete those two backslashes. So this, this code is now online. This one is offline. Terminal, new terminal. You can run this command if you wanna install node daemon. Restarts your application every time you save the file. So it can be a little bit more convenient um, to do that. From here, we can just run node mon. And where is our index.js here? So it's inside source and index.js. So to get to reference this path correctly, we have to go source index.js, right? Cannot find model.env. Okay, yeah, yeah. So let's just control C and let's stop that. So control C to exit is, is uh, how we exit something. And the reason why we're seeing that message is because we have to go npm install. Okay, so we're basically, we haven't installed some of those things. It generated that folder that wasn't saved. So, because this is just dependencies and we didn't save that to version control. control. So I just went npm install. Now we want to run this again. Um, and we should see that this bot starts up correctly. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. I don't know why I, I didn't, I didn't. So the reason why that wasn't working is because we need to make sure this event handler uh, is uncommented, right? So now let's just try that one more time. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so that's good. So we finally got everything here and you can see now we've registered all the commands and like these two commands here, this ping and ban, and we have just had the, had the message that our bot is online, okay? So again, if you want some more information on these steps here, please look at under controls, advanced command handler kind of tutorial because we're gonna be going uh, a little bit past that to try to create this full application. Okay, so now, so we have that now, but basically what we wanna do is we wanna create some commands. So right now, what do we have? We have the bot is online, which is correct. It's green, it's active, that's good. Um, and I also have the slash commands, which should be coming from here. It may take a little while to update uh, on this specifically here. Um, yeah, I don't think it's updated just yet, which is okay, let, let me just try that again. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's finally appeared. I don't know why it took a little bit of a while to appear. So you can see that I have like this, we have this um, fake slash command, which is ban, and we have this other um, command here, which is the ping, right? So if I just click on this, and you can see it has uh, one millisecond of ping. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, we're pretty much done there. So now what we wanna do is we want to start by connecting a MongoDB database. Okay, so I'm also just going to go to, I'm gonna use a uh, MongoDB Atlas database here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, search up MongoDB Atlas. Okay, so I searched up MongoDB Atlas and this is pretty much a cloud database. So that means that it's hosted on like MongoDB's servers. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to create a new account here. So I'm just gonna create a new account so I can just walk you through all the steps on to how to do this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press accept. So I'm just gonna press accept and submit. Okay, so I'm just gonna put in some random stuff. Uh, learn MongoDB, new to MongoDB, uh, whatever, JavaScript. Um, yep, whatever, uh, whatever, serverless, that's good. And we'll just go finish. Okay, okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm just going to go M0 and I am going to deploy this in US East one, that's fine by me. Okay, but the key thing to note here is, just so make sure you click on M0 because this is a free one, these other ones are paid. So use this free one here. And what I'm going to do is make sure that this region is the same as your AWS deployed uh, EC2 instance. Otherwise, like if, <laughs> I experienced some delays because basically it's gonna to have to jump around regions to do it. So just make sure you keep this region the same just for the fastest kind of responses. Okay, so this one I'm just gonna call Discord bot and I'm just gonna go create. Okay, so it requires you to complete a capture. I'm gonna do that. Okay, so here what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to give it a, yeah, 
Let's go with that, why not? We'll go with this random, let's, let's auto-generate another secure password. Obviously, don't show this to anybody, um, uh, but in this case, I'm going to be deleting this database soon afterwards, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I'm just going to, in fact, record that. So let me just put in this username here. So I really suggest save a copy of this username password because you're gonna, you are going to have to use it multiple times, and if you forget it, um, well, it's gonna be bad because uh, you basically need to create a new database um, or, or create a new user for your database, which is a little bit annoying. So we're just gonna click on create user there. So I've created a user to authenticate into our database. And now I'm just going to, so we already have my current IP address added here. People in these tutorials always tell you to use 0.0.0.0 slash zero. And they just say all IP addresses. Okay, so however they always prefix this by saying like, you know, this is a security risk and it kind of is because this means that you're allowing every IP address to access this. Okay, so this is not really good practice. So what I'm gonna show you instead is, well, by default, it already adds your IP address. However, let's say that you have another computer that you wanna add IP address to, right? So an easy way to do this is really if you just run this command here, so ns lookup my IP opendns.com resolver1.opendns.com here. So I've just, I'll put this in the description below, um, but basically it gives you your public IP address here. Okay, so as you can see here, this matches exactly. So as you can see it's 42.241.40.30. Okay, and you can see that it also matches right here. And you have to add the backslash 32 because this means that it's only gonna be one IP address. We, should, we will need to add the uh, AWS EC2 IP address later. Uh, but let me, let me just finish and close. Um, we can just hide quick start guide and go to overview. Okay, so we've now created this uh, database here. So what we can do here is now, now I can click on the connect button here and I wanna access it from my Node.js application. So I'm just gonna click on drivers. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this right here. And I am going to pretty much paste it into my, uh, into my application here. So I'm gonna to go to my uh, .env file here now, and I'm just going to paste this right here. Okay, so what's the password? Well, the password is just the one that we just had right here. So let me just replace password here with my actual password. And from there, this is all fine. Okay, so I'm just going to save and I'm going to uh, go to index.js. And instead of using this line of code with event handler, I'm going to comment this out. And I'm just going to go control backslash. So control backslash toggles the comments on all selected lines. Okay, so you can see now that this line is uncommented. So we wanna just connect to our database first. That's a key thing. So I wanna go no daemon source index.js, right? And what you can see here is we have that and we have this message which is connected to DB, which is really good because if this did not connect, then we would see this error message instead, right? So we wouldn't see this connected to DB if we tried to do this. Again, so this is an, um, this is an async function. So an asynchronous function means that we don't know how long it will take, right? So that's what the purpose of async is. So for example, when you're connecting to a database, what happens if your internet connection is just a little bit slower or a little bit faster? So we don't know how much time it really is going to take. So what we're doing here with the await command is we're waiting until this, um, basically, this connection is finished. And then we're gonna go on to the next line of code. So it's kind of waiting for this, this line of code, which we don't know how long it's gonna to take to connect to our online database, because your internet speed could be very different and a lot of different other things. So we can't say specifically, this is gonna take 200 milliseconds. One time it might, might take 200 milliseconds to connect to our MongoDB DB database here, but also, Another time, it might take 500 milliseconds. That's why we have this await command. And after that happens, we can say that it's connected to the DB. Also, you can see that this is kind of already Git managed. Um, I would suggest, I would highly, highly suggest, because we, we wanna be pushing to our own repository, not to the, the repository that I made, right? If you just go back to your folder, uh, which you have created this uh, thing here, you can see that there will be a .git hidden file folder here. 
So the way we can see this is if you just, in Windows 11, it'll be like view and you can go show and make sure that you have hidden items checked, right? Because if you have, if you, if you don't see this folder here, you might have to go view, show and hidden items, okay? So you can see that there's this hidden git file. So this pretty much is the record of all the local changes. So we're just going to delete this git file here, this git folder, so then we can push it to a new repository basically. But we'll think about that a little bit later. Okay, perfect. So now the question is, how do we start to kind of code this up now? So we have that, that all, all that code. Um, I'm actually just gonna be using this as a second reference because I've already finished this code here. So I'm going to be referencing this and showing you how to code this along the way. So I want some more slash commands here, right? Because I want to be able to set like specific channels. So I could make this really lazy and just listen to all channels. But if you see here, we have a stream chat channel here, right? So the chances are a lot of these other channels you don't want to receive notifications for. Like because people are just in stream chat and they might be spamming messages because they might be saying, oh, hi, look at this GIF uh, I've created, right? And then did you want a notification for this? Probably not, right? Because you wanna be able to have the uh, choice to set specific channels that you want to uh, basically use this um, to notify, uh, send push notifications uh, for. Okay, so let's get started by actually coding this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file, new folder here, and I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna call it mentions. Okay, so I'm going to right click and create a new file here, and I'm going to go and create the set notification channel.js file here. So this is the true part of the coding tutorial that we're gonna be doing. And what I'm gonna do here first is I'm going to be, um, getting, pulling the libraries that I need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go const application uh, command option type, wait one second, equals require discord.js first. Require discord.js. Now the, the autocomplete will work because, yep, so option type actually, option type. And you can click on tab to kind of autocomplete. Next, I'm gonna go permission flag bits. So we're gonna go module.exports and I'm just going to add this here. So because we have this, um, we have this code here, we have this advanced command handler by um, under control. We can just use this module exports here. And if we look at just one of these other ones, in fact, this is probably the easiest way to do this is just copy one of these here, uh, the previous examples, and you can just put it there. So you can see that we have this name, description. So the development only means that it's only gonna work in the development um, server. Um, we have test only options and deleted, right? So we have all these here. So what I'm gonna do here instead is I'm just going to start changing some of the names. So I just wanna make sure that I have the correct, uh, the correct command here in the server first before I do anything else. So I'm just going to go and call this set notifications channel. I want to give it a description and I'm just going to call um, replace existing, replaces existing and sets the notification channel, role and channel. Okay. Now, so what I'm going to reply back with for now is I'm just going to say, um, set notifications channel. Okay, so we're gonna do this much and just see how it works, okay? So we're gonna take it one step at a time, make sure that everything here is gonna work. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to Discord and I'm just going to uh, make a slash command and I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna click on here and you can see that I have this new command here already. So you can see it has that, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> um, that's my, my fault. Um, just to clear this up, um, the way to kind of make sure that you delete it uh, just with this code here is I'm just going to make sure I uncomment this and I'm gonna say true here. Because if you don't do this, like basically it will always remember that previous command that we had, the set notifications channel that's misspelled. So now you just need to run it once 
Oops. Uh, oops. Let me just misspell that first because otherwise it won't actually set it to delete. So now you can see it deleted the command, the wrong command now. So I'm gonna press Control C. I'm gonna comment this line of code which says deleted. And I'm just going to set this to the right spelling and just go uh, and register the right command now. So you can see now it's spelled correctly. Now I can backslash and you can see, hopefully if it updates in a bit, um, it may take a little bit of a while. Sometimes it takes a little bit of a while and we may need to go to a different channel first and go right and just put that there. Yep, so you can see that we no longer, if we just go to here, we no longer have the incorrect command and now we have the correct command here. And you can see that works. Okay, so now let's actually get started by adding options to this. Okay, so we're gonna start by adding some options to our slash command. So I'm going to just do this. Um, and you can see here, um, in fact, I'm just going to copy, or actually, no, I'm not, not gonna copy this here, but I'm gonna give this two, two things here, right? Because what we really want, if I just check like my test server here, is we want two options here. We want the notification channel option, and we want the notification role. Okay, so let's just go to do that. So we want, for every um, option, we always want the following kind of things. We want a description, we want a required, and we want a type here. Okay, so the reason why we had this application command option type here is because we need it over here. So if I just copy this here, this, is, this can be basically anything that you want to put in here. So you see how we have all these options here? So I can either be an attachment, a Boolean, a channel, an, integra, an integer. So basically these are all the things that uh, can, we can attach to this slash command. So what I want here first is I wanna give it what I wanna put in first. So I'm just gonna name this notification channel. And if this is a channel here, what are we gonna do? We're gonna call it a channel here as well, right? Because we wanna make sure the type is correct for what we're putting in. Now second, this description here, it's just gonna be a string. So we're gonna just gonna say the channel to set for notifications. And make sure you add a comma at the end of every one of these lines I have run into many errors here uh, sometimes when I just forget a piece of code. So please uh, have a look at the GitHub. I always really, really suggest that you look at the GitHub for the finished pro pro project and just look at just the file that you have and compare the file you have to my finished file because my finished file works. So sometimes you're just missing a small line of code that can really derail the entire application when you try to run it again. And let me press Control C here just to stop the application. It's gonna be a little bit annoying if it restarts every time I save while I'm just uh, coding up some basic stuff. So we can also make this required equals true. So this means that if, do they need to add that uh, kind of thing to it? Is it optional basically? In this case, it's not because we need them to, answer, to add a channel. We can't just leave it empty. Okay, so we're just gonna copy all this again but instead this time we're gonna change it to notification role, right? And I'm just gonna change this to role and this one I'm gonna change to role as well. Okay, so with that much done, let's just have a look at um, one thing. So we're going to go, okay, so um, before I do anything else, I wanna just make sure that I'm putting in the right things here. So the way to do this is we're just going to go, um, uh, let me just go uh, const, I'll create a constant and I'll just call this uh, the channel. And I'm just gonna say that this is interaction. So we're taking this, this uh, object there and we can just use this kind of thing here, this, not this notation to get. So we have to get, get the same name here that we put. So let me just copy this here. And so we're just getting the value here. Okay, so uh, you can use the Discord documentation just to see a couple of examples. Um, I got this from under control and it works. So, yep, let me just also create one for the role as well, right? Because I want this notification role and let me just change this to role instead. Okay. So now that's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to 
uh, set notifications channel and I'm just going to say um, channel uh, and then I'm just going to add a dollar sign and these uh, parentheses. So whenever in, in Discord, uh, sorry, in, in, in JavaScript here, we have this notification, this, this notation with the back ticks. So whenever you add a, a, a dollar sign and the parentheses, you're changing into a variable here. And this just makes it easier for us to write variables inside of things because we don't need to go uh, like something like plus a variable, right? Because that can sometimes get you out of the, can be a little bit annoying if you have to keep going plus. That's why I personally really like this feature of JavaScript where you can just go dollar sign and then just put in the channel here. Okay, so, and I'm also gonna put in the role, um, which is just role as well. Okay, so I'm just putting in the dollar sign and the parentheses. So I'm just uh, pretty much console logging this out, basically. Um, I can actually also use console.log as well in this here, but in fact, let me just show this as a test. This is a log. So you can see that it will come out to the actual console as well. So now let's just run this again. And we're just waiting to see that it's connected to the DB and we've edited that command set notification channel, which is good. So this much by itself should work here. So let me just go to my test server and I'm just gonna go set notifications channel. Okay, so you can see now that I have two option, options here, right? So notification channel, I can set it as general. And this one, I don't have any roles currently, but I can set, set at every one here. Okay, so you can see that it gives out a, like basically the ID here. So if I just check that against this here, so let me just see, so this is the general channel. If I copy channel ID by right clicking, copy channel ID, let's just compare those. So you can see that's completely correct, right? So that's the general channel. And the at every one, if I just go at every one here, and if I just write, you can't actually, yeah, you can't actually uh, check this here, can you? It's a little bit hard. But anyway, so th those are correct here. Uh, let me just create a few other roles, in fact. So if I just go to server settings, and I'm just gonna go to roles, and I'll just create a few roles just for demonstration purposes, because it makes it easier. So I'm gonna create a red role, I'm gonna create a, a blue role, and a, and a green roll. Okay, so blue, and then I'm gonna create one more, which is green. Okay, so I'm just gonna give myself the red roll here. So just for testing purposes, I'm gonna go manage members, add members, I'm gonna add myself. Okay, so I just, I just have the red roll right now. So if I click on myself, I only have this red roll. How do we format this? Okay, so if we wanted this to like be a actual channel. So even before we get to the database stuff, we really need to look at Discord formatting. Okay, so I wanna just take you to the documentation here because um, if you wanna do something else, it's message, so it's reference. Okay, so it's in the reference. I don't know why it's in the reference page, but whatever, it's in the reference. And if you just scroll down here to the um, formatting, message formatting, so this one here, I'll link it in the description below, but you can see that different things are done differently, right? So we kind of got a ID there, but what happens if we want to show a specific, uh, for example, channel here? So we just need to put a this uh, less than sign and then a hashtag here, right? So the same thing with a role here, you can see it's really weird formatting. So it'd be this at sign and then and. Okay, so let me just try that out in Discord itself. Also, I forgot to say that you can see that if we console logged out, it's console log, this is a log, it works, right? So we can kind of just delete this line now, but um, basically let's go back and let me just try to kind of do this here. So if I just put this one in here and I just have a look at this, so this is a channel here. If I try to go, I just and put this here, it doesn't work, right? So if I try to put it as a at sign, this doesn't work either because this is for a user. So let's have a look at that documentation again. If this is a channel, right? This is a channel here. What do I need to put? I need to put a hashtag. So let's just try that there. So I'm just gonna put that there and you can see that that works. Great. What about this role here? Okay, so this role, let me just try and go and have a look at the documentation here. So the role, it needs to be an and and then an ampersand kind of symbol. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and 
and ampersand, and I'm going to copy this here. And I'm just going to go, and you can see it says at, at everyone, um, but that is correct. However, we will have to kind of sort this one out a little bit later with a little bit of a weird case scenario. It's going to be a little bit annoying, but that's okay. We can kind of sort this one out later. But let me just try that. Let me just add the red roll for just something, just for something here. And if I can just copy this, uh, how can I copy this uh, thing here? Okay, we, we probably can't do that. So let me just set notification channel again. And let me just use the general and let me use red. Okay, so you can see that we have the ID of the red roll here. So if I just put this one in here like this, so I have an and sign, an at sign, and then an and sign, and then the thing, you can see it turns into red. So this is perfect because now we know exactly how to bring these roles in. Because that's the first thing that you should be able to do. If you can't even do this manually, you shouldn't even think about like coding this, right, Pro programmatically. So always try to test things out and make sure that you can do them manually first. And just do a really simple example. So let's just apply our understanding that we just learned there. So again, if we're using a channel here, we need to use the dash or this, this thing here, and we use this hashtag, and I'm gonna use this uh, right angle bracket here. Now the next thing is I just wanna go and, this at and and, right, because it's a role, okay? So I should see that this should now work correctly. So I'm just gonna save this file here, and you can see that it's restarting because I'm using no daemon. And whenever it, I save the file, it will restart the uh, Node.js application. So let me just try that again. So if I just set notifications channel now, I should see general and then red, right? Okay, so you can see that it goes general and it goes and it actually pings the role successfully as well. So the reason why, like a lot of the time I had, I spent like, and like maybe two hours trying to debug why this role wasn't being pinged, okay? And I just wanted to point out something very specific that I've added in this index.js file, which is this allowed mentions thing right here, okay? This allowed mentions allows you to pretty much mention these roles and you need to put in everyone or you need to put in users if you kind of put that in, right? Um, something interesting that you'll notice and, and it was what, something that I noticed that I did allude to earlier is if you put in the at everyone, it doesn't actually ping the role because uh, Discord doesn't actually recognize like this. You can't, you can't put in like a user ID. You can't put in a role ID for at everyone. The only way you can ping at everyone that role is just by literally going at everyone. So we will kind of make a special use case for that one, uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. Later, we'll just use an if statement and just throw it in there and just make it, if it's gonna do this instead, just do at everyone instead, okay? So, so far so good, okay? So make sure that you always put in allowed mentions, make sure you have these intent bits here, these are correct, okay? And you have this, you've pulled it from uh, the Discord JS, you've imported this kind of in intense bits, bit fields class. Also something to check if the notifications are not working, uh, please go to your disc Discord developer portal and make sure that privileged gateway intent is active. So you have all these things three active and make sure that your URL generator was generated with bot and administrator, okay? That's like the key things if like you're not seeing these pings because you should be seeing these pings, okay? Now, um, well, just to test one last thing, I guess. So let's go back to our new file here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pretty much um, just do one more reply, interaction.reply, and I'm just going to um, say uh, at everyone, just to test that at everyone is mentioning everything correctly as well. Because you should do this test, otherwise you might find out that it's not working. Um, first things first, I wanna just continue kind of just coding this out. So, let me just save this. Let me go terminal, new terminal. And I think we already have a terminal here, don't we? So let me just delete this one, like delete that terminal. Let me press control C and let me restart that. So I'm just pressing the up arrow and pressing enter to restart this every time. Because up arrow means to go to the previous command. Okay, so now let's just test this again. So let me go back here. 
Because now instead of doing set notifications channel, um, instead of putting that message there, it should just at everyone, right? And you can see that I'm getting that mention here. Okay, so which is really, really good. Let me just delete this at everyone. We've tested that the at everyone works. So let me just save and control C to stop that there. Okay, so that is good. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're going to actually start making the database queries. Okay, so to make the database queries, we first need to make a models folder, right? So what is a models folder? A models allows us to kind of create a schema. Okay, so you see this package here, this mongoose package. Um, this allows us to give basically some types because there's already MongoDB, but mongoose is something that sits on top of MongoDB. We're gonna open up this source folder and I'm gonna right click on it and go new folder. And I'm gonna add a models folder here. Okay, so I'm gonna add a models folder. Wait, it already exists? Wait, wait. Okay, we already had this here. <laughs> well, that's my bad. I forgot to delete it from, I actually forgot to delete it. That's my bad. I should have deleted this beforehand, but that's okay. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't really make a difference. I'll pretend it's deleted and then I'll right click on the source folder. I'm gonna go new, I'm gonna go new folder here. I'm gonna go models, okay? So this is basically just defining the schema. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new file here and I'm gonna call it a notification channel.js, okay? So the the uh, convention is to really name it as a singular thing, even though you know multiple. For example, if you had, you could create a, a model here, which is like a, if you have multiple pets and you know you're gonna define that in your database and you're gonna have, a, like you're gonna record the number of pets. I don't know, um, you're gonna record uh, like maybe their pets and their, uh, how much they get to eat per day, right? So you can just go pet.js, right? That could be one thing that you wanted to create, for example. Okay, or I don't know if you had, if you wanted to record the number of swords or something, I don't know, you can go weapon.js, right? But obviously for this one, I'm just recording like the notification channel, right? So I wanna keep it simple. I'm just gonna have this one here. So. What we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna go create a const because that's the way to import libraries in, uh, in Node.js. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type in schema model equals require um, mongoose. Okay, so we're importing this from the mongoose library. Okay, so now I'm just going to go down here and I'm just going to create basically the schema here. So this allows us to create typed things. So, because normally uh, MongoDB doesn't have types for, for the various uh, fields. So this means you can put in any type, you can put in like an int, and then the next time you could put in a, a, uh, a string or something, right? Into the same field. So this is kind of a problem for us because, you know, sometimes we actually do want to check and make sure that a guild ID is a string, right? We can't have it just suddenly become a Boolean because that would be kind of bad. It, it doesn't make sense because it's a guild ID, it shouldn't be a Boolean, right? That's why we're doing this here and creating the schema. Also, Mongoose is just like better. It has some extra functions, but basically this is a really good thing that we're doing here. So then we have like strongly typed so we're kind of having a mix between the normal no S so this is a no SQL database, um, which means it doesn't have like strong types like MongoDB. However, yeah, we're adding some of that back in basically with these libraries. Okay, so I'm just adding some basic things here. Um, just so, cause I know we're gonna try to record this. Okay, it really helps sometimes to kind of just think and plan to yourself how this is gonna come out. So, so one way I really like to do this is just like in, in Excel. So if I just open up a new tab here, so I'm just going to like, for example, if I'm just thinking of how am I gonna record um, on, a per, on a per server basis, right? So I'm gonna call this maybe, um, let's say this is the server ID, okay? And then this is the, so I wanna record like what notification channels have they set and what kind of, so this will be the notification channels array, 
right? So I've already done this, so I already know exactly how I'm gonna do this, but um, if you are just coming up with your own idea and you don't know of how to plan this out properly. Okay, so I'm just gonna go um, notification channel, right? So you can just give yourself an example, right? So this is a channels array, channel IDs array, and this is the um, role IDs array. Right, so how are we gonna record this? Because we need to keep in mind that we want this to work for a lot of servers because a lot of servers might be using this bot, right? So we want to record a separate entry for each one of them. So let's just pretend that this is the ID for server A, okay? And now, what are we gonna record here? So we're gonna record the channel. In fact, I'm gonna make this instead of, like we all know that these are gonna be IDs, okay? So these are not going to be so this, this is not gonna be like a string like this, right? But we're gonna pretend that it's like a string like this, okay? Just for our understanding's sake. So this is channel A, um, and what it's gonna record here, it's gonna record um, general, okay? Uh, it's gonna record discussion, right? For example, someone might wanna say, just these two channels I want to receive notifications from. Now this one here, I'm just going to record, uh, for example, I could record the red roll that we saw. I could record at everyone. I could record um, blue, right? So this is what we're going to be recording in our database. And now we could have channel, we could have another one, right? So I, I could have, uh, for example, uh, it's not channel A, I should be saying server A. So this is how we kind of like ration, rationalize it to ourselves and just say, yeah, this kind of this kind of storage method will work, right? Um, and maybe this one just wants the discussion channel right here, right? We just want to have pings from the discussion channel, right? And this one might just want um, um, at um, my fan club or something. I don't know. We just want to ping this role here whenever whenever there's a message here, okay? So yeah, so we can just do that kind of stuff. And that's how we can figure out to ourselves that this kind of schema will work. And that's how we know, like we want a guild ID. So a guild ID is the same as server ID. We have a channel ID array. So that will record this array of uh, kind of values. And then we have this role ID array. So this will record all the roles that we want to ping. So it's gonna be a string, which is just like, so the actual, I'll, I'll type the actual values, right? So it's actually gonna look like this, okay, whatever. It's gonna look like this. Like that's what it, what the actual thing is gonna be, okay? Because again, remember, we're gonna record the IDs themselves, okay? But we're still gonna record a string anyway. And this one here, we're gonna record a type, and we're gonna use this uh, brackets here to, to kind of say that it is an array, okay? So what do I mean by that? You can see that it, it contains multiple values, not just one, okay? You can see there's one and there's two, okay? Um, so we're going to go required and true. Okay, here, that's perfect. And now for this one here, we're gonna do the same thing and we're just gonna go like this. So you can have commas at the end here because for each new line, you need a comma. And for no, like JS is smart enough to know that this is, this is fine. And this is the end. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go module.exports module because we're gonna be using this in another file, right? So we wanna say, what are we going to be exporting from this file if we use it in another file? Okay, so we're going to be exporting this model, which is called notification channel. And I'm just going to, so I'm, I named that exactly the same as the name of the file. And we're just going to be calling this, and we're gonna be exporting the schema. So you can see what I mean now by types, right? So you can see that this thing always needs to be a string. If we tried to insert a value which was not a string with this, it wouldn't work. That's why we use a schema. So we can check for typing and that's correct. And yeah, it's a good feature. Um, so let me just add a semicolon there to finish the full stop for the coding pretty, for coding pretty much. And yeah, let us continue on. Um, also, I, I do have an example in my other finished file 
that kind of just shows exactly what we're meaning to record. So you can see, so in a MongoDB database, this will be the primary key. So the primary key is basically the unique, this value is always gonna be unique. So even if you have multiple things that record the same thing, like all these same values, this is always gonna differentiate it, right? Then we have the guild ID. So you can see that that's that. And we have the channel IDs and the role IDs. So that's what we're gonna basically gonna be recording. Okay, so now that model is done, we want to actually start using it. Okay, so we've connected to the database, we've done all that, we wanna start actually creating and writing values to the database. Uh, let, so I wanna make a variable here, I'm gonna go channel type. Okay, I just wanted to show you one thing before, to understand why we're doing this, right? So channel dot type. And I wanted to just go uh, console.log channel type. So again, we're using that uh, backtick notation. So I'm just gonna go channel type again. So I'll just run no daemon. And I just wanted to show you exactly what, what, why we're doing this, right? Because we should understand why um, set notification channel, and let me just go general and red, right? Okay, so let me just, so there wasn't any message here because we didn't do that, but let's have a look here. So channel type. Yep, so I've just, I, I didn't made a mistake there. It should be in type of, from what I understand. Let me just try that again. So I'm just gonna run this slash command again, set notification channel, red. So you can see here that, yeah, so the type, this is a string already, so that's okay. Okay, so yeah, if it wasn't a string, um, we would have to convert it into a string, basically. We'd have to just, um, I did I kind of did do this wrongly in my other code then, um, but what we would have to do is we'd have to go like, if we wanted to use it elsewhere, we could go like string um, and kind of string this. Oh, sorry, it'd be like this. But obviously in this case, it's already a string like because we've already checked with type of, so we don't need to do this. So we don't need to type in string, that's fine. Um, now, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go const uh, query. So I'm gonna create a query here. Um, this is gonna be our guild ID. And I'm gonna go interaction.guild ID. In fact, I can just turn this to let. So what's the difference between a constant and a let, right? So I keep going let and I go const, right? So if I try to set, let's see this, right? So I try to go roll equals uh, potato, right? This code here is gonna give me an error because I've tried to set a variable which was a constant, right? So I can't do that, but let me just demonstrate that because why not? Um, it's gonna throw an error and the bot's gonna stop working, but Let's have a look here. So you can see uh, there was an error running assignment to a constant variable, right? So basically it's designed so that you're not supposed to change this value after it's been created. That's what a constant is. Okay, so let me just control C and let's just delete that example there. But you can't, it will just cause a crash if you try to set to a constant variable. However, a let query, we might be add, like doing another query later, right? So this query variable might change later. Okay, so we, that's why we use a let variable. So this is the query here, right? Let me just show you exactly how do we, how do we do a query in, in MongoDB, right? So basically, uh, we're gonna use this notation here, okay? And what we do here is, the first thing that we're gonna put here is basically the field, right? So I, I'm gonna put, I put it outside there, but if we're gonna do it inside here, let me make it super clear. Okay, so what we would do here is we would put in, for example, a string here, right? So we, we can put in a string. So this is what we're gonna search for, right? We're gonna search for exactly this here, uh, guild ID, right? So this is what we're searching for, right? So we're gonna be replacing this obviously with a variable like this string here, but this is how, so, the first kind of thing here is the filter saying, can I find this, right? So it's looking for this kind of ID. We're looking for an entry in the database record 
that is already there that already has that okay but obviously we don't have that so on the first time right now so i was basically on the overview page here i went inside the database and then i just go to browse collections and if you just look at um collections here we actually have no data at all right now obviously we have nothing there in mongodb atlas but i'm still going to do this here so i'm just going to instead of putting that here that entire thing i just like putting it as externally because it's just cleaner right um, now now we've done that what we can do is i can just add a thing here so you can see that this that we have a red arrow here this is because it's only allowed within an async function so we need to specify that this function um, may take extra time right so asynchronous always is the idea that we're doing things in parallel or we're doing we're waiting for things that we don't know how long they're going to take right so we can just add in an async here and you can see that's gone away okay so let's have a look so let me just do this Whenever we're doing queries, we should wrap them in a try catch block because if there is a problem, especially because you'll find a lot of the time that this, this query notation for MongoDB is just absolutely so annoying. It's really, really annoying. Okay, I'll, I'll promise you that. Um, but yeah, so you want to be able to catch this error and print it out. Okay, so we want to kind of have this catch block and then have error and then what I like to do personally is just to out the error, honestly, because um, that'll probably give me enough information. But I do like to also say, um, just to the front end as well, there was an error with the set notifications channel command. And then what you can do if you wanna be really, really nice is you, want, you can just right click on your own user, you can copy your user ID um, you can say, um, please contact the developer. And then remember, how do we style a, a, a thing here? We can just add, add this here. So the and and the at before the ID. So this is your own ID here. And then you can just say like that. Okay, so if I just do that, let me just add a full stop to that. Say I misspelled that, right? Then we should see an error here. And let's just have a look at what it does, right? So let me just go up arrow and press enter again so I can run my bot and we can just start running some commands. Right, so let me just try um, set notifications channel and I'm just gonna go general, I'm gonna go blue, right? And do we have any errors? Notification channel is not defined. Ah, yes, I forgot. <laughs> we didn't even define that first. Let me first define that before I do anything else. Um, so we didn't actually grab the reason why. So if we just look at this error here. Um, it's literally that we don't have any variable called notification channel. And we tried referencing something that was non-existent. All right, so if we just go const notification channel, we go require. So how do we get back to this um, models folder here, right? So we're in this mentions folder here, right? Right now we're in this mentions folder. So we need to go back up and we're gonna give a relative path, right? So right now I am in this file here. So I wanna go up one folder. So how do I go up one folder to commands, right? So I'm just gonna go dot dot. That means to go up one folder. So if I, how do I get back to this source folder here? Because I wanna go into the source folder so I can get into models. So again, I have another two dots, right? And then now I'm just gonna go into the models folder, right? Because now I'm in the models folder here and you can see that if I just go into notification channel.js, well, you don't actually need, even need to go .js because it kind of knows that this is .js. The reason why we have .js here is because the package is literally called .js, discord.js, right? You can see it's discord.js. Otherwise, just normally, this, it's pretty obvious that there, there will be a JS at the end of all these. Right, because this is a JavaScript, a Node.js uh, project. So you don't actually need to put the .js at the end. Now, let's just save that and do that again. So that's working now, I think. Let me just try that again. Set notification channel. And let's go green. Yep, okay. 
Um, I can probably just get rid of this um, console log because it's a little bit annoying. That was just D for debug for debug purposes. Um, there was no error, it seems like. Okay, let me just actually <laughs> screw that up um, better. So even if you misspell it, it seems like there's no error. Um, but let me just break up this format entirely. Can I just go like that? So this should, oh, I forgot to add this. I don't know how I can actually miss, miss this up really badly. It's really hard. <laughs> Let me just see if I can do this. Okay, I'll, I'll just try that. And let's see if I can mess that up now. Because that should mess it up. Um, this is just for the sake of curiosity. I know that it's not the most. Yes. Okay, so how do we destroy this? Yeah, yeah. So you can see that now we have actually, we've actually um, kind of stopped it altogether. And I'm kind of curious, why is that a deleted role? But that's okay, but um, I'll try that next. But yeah, so you can see now that we've actually created this thing and it has actually sent this message here. Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I get it. I get it. So let's try that one more time. Um, so I had an and. This is not a role here. It's supposed to be a user, right? So it's just, if I look at the formatting inside the docs, again, let's have a look. For a user, it should just be and, just and, right? So we don't need user star. We just need user. So we just and that. Okay. So let's just try that one more time. Um, Control C and let me just try it again. So this is just confirming that our develop like our developer message works All right so let's just go general and blue excuse me how did that work <laughs> excuse me <laughs> excuse me did i just kind of um it should have replied with there was an error why why did it not reply properly i think this might just be a weird interaction honestly i'll be honest um it does it's a wee little bit of a weird interaction here. But basically, if you have any errors with your bot, please always look at the terminal um, and just try to debug it from there. Okay, so let me just um, revert this back. Oops, not all that. Um, okay, yeah, so that's fine. So I, went, I just reverted this back. So basically I have guild ID, interaction.guild ID. And now this one should be like that. Because that was just a test if the interaction.reply was working. It seems to have been working, but obviously if you have the complete wrong format, I guess that might cause some errors. Um, but yeah. Okay, so that's working now. Um, now, let me just do some extra stuff here. So now that we have this, I want to also... Um, so what, 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 are, what are we doing here? Why are we even awaiting notification channel here? So we want to check if there is an existing row. So trust me that I have tried to be really smart about this in my old project. So this is my project that I was trying to just debug this. And I tried to do this here. Okay, I'll just uncomment it so you can see it. I wanted to be really smart and I wanted to make a database query to update one and then basically a set and I could set on insert and do an upsert as well. So basically that means if it doesn't exist, so update it. But if it doesn't exist, do an insert instead. And I can tell you, this did not work at all, okay? Uh, I think I just had the wrong code, but I really suggest that you just do it properly and just make a query to, to see if there are any existing rows, if. Um, so we can set this to a const, right? And right now, um, so there's an, I'm just gonna call it notif. And if there is a notif, so basically, um, so this means that there is an existing role, right? There is an existing uh, record in the database for this guild, for this guild ID, server ID. 
Okay, again, uh, these comments, so these are, this is just a comment, it doesn't actually do anything, but I highly suggest that you always comment your code very, very in depth. Okay, so, so if there is one here, um, what we want to do is we want to update, right? We want to update the existing record. Now, if there isn't one, right? So basically this object will return undefined if there is nothing in this here, right? So if there's nothing in this here, um, it is like if this query returns zero results. So this guild ID does not exist. Uh, then it will return undefined. So if undefined, that would literally just go to the else statement, right? So basically, if there is no existing record for this guild ID. So again, like when we're grabbing interaction.guild ID, that's grabbing just from this interaction object here and it's grabbing the current guild ID, if that makes sense. So we're just grabbing um, in fact, let me just also console log that out for you. Um, guild ID. And let me just go uh, interaction.guild ID. So the way I found this is just by through a lot of experimentation and looking at the documentation just to make sure that this actually worked. Um, but you can just console log it out first and then see if it actually works. But I can tell you that this does work. Um, so yeah. So um, yeah. So if, if there's uh, for this guild ID, we're going to create. We're going to create a new record. So the way to do this is I'm just going to create a new object here. So I'm going to call this new notif channel, and I'm just going to go new notification channel, um, and I'm just going to go and check the reference here. I'm literally just copying it off my right side. I'm going to be honest. Um, channel, oops, channel ID array and channel. And I'm going to go roll ID array. Roll. Okay, so let me just grab this guild ID string first, right? In fact, let me just put this to a variable because I'm, I'm using it multiple times here, right? You can see I'm using it here. I'm using it here. I might as well just, just put it into something, right? So I might as well just go const guild ID string and then just go equals and then interaction.guild ID. Just a little bit easier if I just do this, right? Because I'm already using it here and using it there. I might as well just put it into a custom variable. And yeah, this one here, basically I'm just using that. So what are we doing here? So we're just creating a new, like a new instance of this model here. So you can see this guild ID and this channel ID array, these names correspond exactly, right? So one way you can actually easily, if you want to compare this like really easily, you can just go uh, control shift P. And I like to look at for the command, open active file in new window. Okay, and this allows you to kind of just compare two if you wanted that. So you can just go Windows left arrow and you can do win. Yeah, so you can just go like that. And you, you can just check, for example, if I go back to here and I just minimize this, then I can compare. So we have the guild ID here, guild ID here, channel ID array, channel ID array, and role ID array. So we just role ID array. So you can see that I've created this object correctly, which is good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to await. Okay, so I'm just going to close this one because I don't actually need it. Um, but because I have two screens instead, um, I would rather use the two screens. But sometimes it does. Um, you do need to create a new window and just bring it to the other window there so you can see. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go await new notif channel dot save. Right. And in this case, I'm going to say console dot log. Um, new row, okay, just so that I know myself that something is new is being created. In this case, I want to say console.log existing row, right, because I really want to check that this is working and this will really help me out. 
Okay, um, I'm going to call this guild ID string. So this is just my debug command just to have a look at that. And let's have a look at this one here. So if there's an existing row, how do we update? Well, actually, no, let's not have a look at that yet because it shouldn't go into that one there. Okay, so um, notif, let's just put in some more comments, will be undefined um, if the find one uh, function returns no uh, results and there are no records. There are no records for the current uh, server Discord server ID. Okay, perfect. That's great. Okay, so now let's just go terminal, new terminal. Um, I can just delete this terminal here because I already have an existing one. Um, but let us, oh, wow, it's been saving and restarting a lot of times. But that's okay. Um, doesn't matter too much. Let me just try this again. Um, set notifications channel. Let's go whatever discussion and let's try um, red. Why not? Okay. Now let us just check this here, right? So we went into the new row. So we so we can see that, well, first of all, the guild ID string is working. So we can see that we were in the new row and it has done this here. So it has saved a new uh, object to our database. So technically we should see that if we go here and just refresh, we should see that we have a document. Yes, we have a document. So the collection will be uh, notification channels and the database will be test, that's my fault. Uh, anyway, so we can see here that we have recorded all these values, which is great. Uh, we could check this and I do advise you check this out. Like you check, you check if like, like just by looking at the roles there, um, you could actually like, for example, um, let's just do this again. So we could just do this and be really cheeky about this if we wanted. And just for debug purposes, this can really help. So let me just try that one more time just to show you. Now we can check, this can help us check that these are actually correct. Because they might not be correct. You don't know, right? You really don't. So it, it just pays to test and really do this properly. Okay? So yeah, so we can see that it has the IDs here. So let me just compare these. Let me just bring this to the left here. And let me just close that and refresh this. And let me just bring, bring this to the right here. And let's have a look. So technically we should have this here. So we should have recorded this guild ID. I'm gonna right click copy server ID. And let me just re record that there. So this is 11632960, ends with 80, that's correct. Now the channel ID, uh, so 1163 um, and ends with 21. Yeah, it looks good. Actually the role ID array is not right. I know what's going on, okay. <laughs> yeah, that is not correct. And that's good why we checked it, okay. Because I just didn't think of anything that we were doing. Okay, so because this is an existing row now, right? Because we already have a row here, but we haven't actually done anything here. Okay, we haven't chosen to do a database query. So it hasn't actually updated anything. Well, I'm just gonna know, I'm gonna make a database query here. So you don't need to put in another try catch because there's already this try catch here, right? So if there's any errors inside this entire block for all these queries, it's always gonna catch it. Okay, if that makes sense, right? So it's because we're always in this try part. So anyway, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to await and I'm gonna go um, notification channel again. So I'm gonna make a new, so we're using this model. So which, which model are we using? They're using this one here. We're using that schema whenever we reference something in Mongoose and I'm gonna go update one, okay? Now, how does an update work? Now, this is the one that's more tricky, okay? So update, it has a thing. I'm just gonna show you the exact one here because, you know, why not? Um, so this is the filter. So this is, it's gonna find a specific document, right? So you can put in anything, any filter here. You can put in the guild ID, you can filter by uh, like the underscore ID because we're using the update one command. Update many will update everything that matches this criteria. This one will just find the first one that matches the criteria and it'll update that, right? So 
Um, if you have, if you want to update a lot of them, you must change this to update many. However, this one here also has this second thing here, which is the options. Okay, so in this case, for the update command, we do need to use the set. Okay, so set means to update and change everything to be exactly um, what it is. Okay, but I'll explain that uh, as we write this code here. Okay, so let's have a look. So guild ID. So this one here, basically, we want to make sure we're looking for if there is an existing role for this guild ID. Okay, so we're going to use guild ID string. And for this one here, so again, let me just press enter and I'm just going to give us a little bit more space. So it's a little bit easier. We can actually just do this in fact. So we can just give ourselves a little bit more space and it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so this one here, the second line, it will start. So this is kind of part of the th reason um, why MongoDB is a little bit annoying with queries because it really, really likes um, <laughs> these things which, are, which can be very annoying to debug, these queries as compared to SQL databases where it's just, you know, this and that, and set that to this, you know? It's just really, really, really obtuse in my opinion. It's like this JSON kind of based thing, but that's okay. Uh, anyway, so what are we trying to update here? Let me just go back to my models, okay? So I wanna, I wanna do this as if I didn't have my reference there, okay? So I'm gonna go Control Shift P again. I'm gonna go open active file in new window. Okay, so now I'm just going to go Windows key, right arrow. And this one I'm just going to put on my here. Okay. Now we're going to go back to set notification.js and we're going to start writing this. Okay, so what do we need want to set here? So let's just really think about this. So do we want to set the guild ID again? Well, not really because the guild ID will never change, right? So even for this record here, we only want to update the... So we searched, we found a record right here. Let's just say that we found a record that looked like this. I don't know, we found this record. So now I'm coming in and saying, hey, instead of general, I don't want any, I don't want any of this thing here. Like this one can go away. What I really want here is, is to be the creative arts channel. I want that to be the channel IDs array. Also, I don't like the red at everyone and this other stuff. I wanna just set this, I wanna erase all that. And I wanna say um, that, I want my, my custom role to be here, okay? That's what I wanna do. So let's think about what are we really updating? We're updating these two values here, okay? So all we need to do is just have these two values update. So let me have a look. So inside this set here, I like to have some extra spaces, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to say, okay, channel ID here. Channel ID array, that needs to be updated. And what does it need to be updated to? Yeah, so I can just put in one thing here. So I can just put in channel. So, but one second, well, we will we will get to that just very soon. But let me just make this, because add some extra formatting here just to make it even more readable because this can be quite hard to see. If we just add this, oops, okay. And we're gonna add this like this. Okay, so we're gonna set, um, okay. Well, this is kind of up to you here, but I like doing this just so we can, it's just, you know, it's just clearer to me. Okay, so we're gonna add this here and now I'm just gonna add this row. Okay, so, so where did we get these from? Okay, let me just stop that for a second. And let me just, so this row ID comes from here. Okay, so we're, just, we're referencing these thing to, uh, columns to update. And let me just have a look here and we're going to scroll up. Okay, so where did we get this thing channel, right? So we wanted to get this channel from over here, right? We wanted to get it from here. It's this constant variable that we just added, right? So we wanted to, we got it from basically whatever value the user set, right? In their slash command. Let me just review that again for you. So let me have a look at here. If we just go set, remember that we have these options here. So basically we want to just, so they have the option to choose a channel and a role here, right? So we just want to have these here set. 
Okay, so, yep. Now let's just do that. Actually, no, the channel and the user selected role. So that's why we have those two. And that's all good. Um, let me just also put this one in. Yeah, that's all, all good there. Um, yeah, okay, now let's just add this in here. Okay, so that, that will work, Let, let's just test that out. So let me just go um, terminal and show terminal. I always create a new terminal when I wanna show the terminal. And let me just go up arrow and just enter and let's try that out. Set notifications channel and we'll just go general blue. Yep, okay, and let's just compare that with our MongoDB database and let's compare that we actually have the right ones now. So let me refresh this by clicking the refresh button. And let me just um, have a look here. So the guild ID is correct. Uh, let me just, no, let me just try it again, you know, why not? Copy server ID, and we'll just put that in, in there. So it ends with, starts with 1163, ends with 180, cool. Uh, channel ID array. So this one here, it should now be 116329. Yep, ends with 8.3, yep. And this one here, it should end with 4.9.0 and it starts with 1.163. Okay, cool, perfect. So you can see that we can now verify that our values have been entered in correctly and have also been updated correctly, which is the greatest thing, so yeah. So, okay, so that's done now. Uh, now, we're just gonna create one command here. Okay, so we're just going to create one extra command that is just pretty much exactly like this. Um, but I want it to, because this one's a set, right? It can only set one channel and one notification at a time. The reason why we're doing that is because you can't actually, like you can't put in multiple things here. And I've tried doing this with like a selector, like a, like a multi-select thing, it doesn't work. Like even if I've tried, I've tried another multi-select and yeah, it just doesn't work well. So I really don't suggest it. So. If we can only suggest set, uh, set one at a time, how can we add like, because as we said in this thing here, so this, this description, so if I just say this channel replaces existing, right? So I said it replaces existing, but we want one that adds to the existing ones. So let's do that real quick. And the good thing is like, we've already written like 90% of the code. So this will be quite easy. So let me just say add channel and role.js. Okay, so I'm just gonna change this here. And what we're gonna do is just rename a few things. Okay, so all I need to do here is just add channel and role. And role, so this is gonna be the name of the command. And I'm just gonna change this one to keeps existing and adds more. So I'm gonna say adds a notification role and channel. So now I'm just gonna change this interaction reply to be updated notification channel. And what I'm gonna do here is the only thing I'm gonna change is right here. So I'm just gonna change this instead of, so this update one here, I'm gonna add some extra stuff. So instead of set, I'm gonna go add to set. So if it's already existing, like it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, well, it's it's gonna ex uh, add extra things here. So I'm gonna to add to set, and this one is already good. Yeah, so it's just gonna to add to that array. So you know how we have that array here? We're gonna to add to it. So that's it, and do we need anything else? Um, let me also change this one here. So the add channel and roles. So one is a reset and add new ones but this one is just adding a channel and a role, right? So let's just do this and channel and role. Okay, please contact the developer. Okay, looks good. Yep, so we'll also test this one here. So let's have a look and let me just start the terminal again. Terminal, new window, delete this. And let me just start this again. You can also start this multiple times and you'll see that there's multiple responses to, to your thing. 
Um, that's why I only suggest doing it once. So let me just do this, add. Okay, wait, oops, let me backslash and let's see if it, I have any other command. I should have a new command. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know why it just took ages to update and it was just being a little bit weird, uh, but that's okay. Um, anyway, um, we just have this here and I'm just going to add channel and roll. Okay, so we have general and red. Okay, so now we should see that basically, um, and also add to set has a really special functionality, which means that if it's not there already, like, so if it's already there, it won't add another one, right? So add to set will only add to the set if it's already, like if it's not there already, okay? So you won't have multiple entries that are just for the repeats for the channels, right? If you already specified a channel, you're not gonna see it again, which is a really, really good thing as well. Um, so not only does it add to that, uh, array, so if I just refresh this here, but it doesn't add extra ones. Let's see, I just refresh this page. So you can look here, we have just zero because we still recorded the general channel, but we added just these two which are different. So we added this extra one which is different. Let me do it one more time just to add channel and roll. And we'll go general, we'll go discussion and blue, why not? Okay, so now if I just refresh this, and we open this up, you can see that we have the extra thing here. So because we already referenced blue before and now we've recorded everything correctly. Okay, so let's continue on. So basically um, we've done the add channel and roll so we've used this add to set command so that um, basically you can update the existing one and add unique um, basically values to this pretty easily. Okay, so if you wanted to have ununique values, again, if you wanted like values which are not unique, we can just use something like this, like push instead. But obviously in this case, I don't wanna record extra information when it's exact same channel because I don't wanna be checking random channels which are not correct. That makes no sense, right? So therefore I'm only using add to set, which means that it only records uh, unique values. If there's the same value, it won't record it again. Okay, so that's all done now. So what we're gonna do now is let me just also, because let me just uh, change this to deleted is true, because I have the, if you look at my um, Discord, I currently had the add channel uh, channel and roles, so I didn't want the S there. So I'm just gonna make it deleted is true, and then I'm gonna reset it. So I'm just gonna go like that, and it should unregister that command. Yep, so deleted that command, which is great. So I can just kind of uh, lose that, and I can bring that back. To show the current channels here, so then it's just easier for me to see. For example, let me show you exactly what I mean. So if I add a channel and roll here, and I go general and I go red, you can see that it shows the exact channels that have been added here, right? So I want to show the exact channels that have been added after I've added a channels and roles. Okay, so technically I don't need to do this to the set notification and channel. The reason why is because uh, this one only allows just like, we're, we're resetting to default, right? So the new channels will only be these this one channel and this one role. Right? But for this new one here, we could have, because it keeps existing, it keeps the existing roles and it adds more. So we could have multiple and we wanna show the current state to inform the user what is the current state of the uh, settings uh, for this uh, current Discord server. Well, there's one thing I missed, missed here. So basically this one here should be inside here. It should be in the try catch underneath here. Because technically this isn't quite correct before because why did why is it not correct? Because I was saying that we have set the notifications channel before we'd actually made the uh, database queries. So that is slightly incorrect there, right? So basically after the database queries are done, are done, uh, show the success message. 
right? So what happens here is if it failed, it would fail here first, and it would never get to say this message here, which is a good thing, because otherwise you still say this message whether or not we have a failure on our hands, which is not a good thing, okay? So let's just um, also do the same thing with add channel here. So I'm just gonna move this code here afterwards, right? So I'm actually just gonna delete this one and I'm gonna copy it from the previous file right here. Let me just shrink that down. Um, and let me just grab it here. I'll put it in the same place over here. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see. So in order, what, in order to do this, so after this is done, now we want to show all of them. So I wanna make a, another database query here. I'm just going to make another query, which is the same query that I have up here. So I'm just gonna say let updated query. So this will still be the guild ID string. So that's the same thing, right? So we're still gonna be getting the guild ID string from up there, it's the same one. I'm gonna make the database query. Okay, so make database query on updated um, after the update. So the reason why I'm doing this is because it's just so much easier if I just make one more query to the database rather than trying to um, add up the previous data. I just don't think it's a good idea. I'd rather just instead of like having the previous, cause I did make one query to it beforehand. Like I made it like right here, right? So over here, I made this kind of query here. So technically I could just get it straight from here and I could add whatever I was adding on top. But the best way and most accurate way as well, because you know, sometimes the database not, might not update or something. Um, so then the best way is just to make one more query here. And it's just so much easier, it's less code as well. Const updated document. So I'm just gonna use the notification channel model again, and I'm gonna go find one, and it's still gonna be, it's just gonna be the updated query. Okay, so we're just taking that again. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to, wait, I don't know why these are out of line as well, but what I can do here is I can just go if, so if any results were returned, um, it will go into here. Okay, so uh, if any results are returned, um, uh, collect the results. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go if updated document. And then I'm just going to add. Um, so I'm gonna create a variable here. Have I used this? Retrieved. I'm gonna call this retrieved or upt. I'm gonna call it upt. Um, channel ID array, because I don't want to confuse it with other ones, but so just, I just want to prefix it with something that makes it a lot easier to kind of just see there. So the way we can just do this is we literally just go like that. So updated document, so we fetch the updated document. Um, and then again, we get just the value that we want to get. For instance, if we just go to this model here, um, you can see that we are just getting this channel ID array here, right? And we can also get raw ID, so we just use dot raw ID array or dot channel ID array to get like a property of that model. Okay, so just one, one note of convenience like while I'm at here, so you can right click on this bar here, just to turn on command center. The reason why I do this is because this back arrow just is really helpful, like just for going back to the code that I was previously at. Okay, so we're also gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna call this upt um, roll ID array. And I'm just gonna call this um, updated document dot role ID array. And let me just check that the name is correct here. So I'm gonna go to this here. I'm gonna go inside here and role ID array is the name. So that's correct. I'm just gonna go back to my code. And now I can just 
I have both of those values now. And I can just go with updated document. Um, so once I've retrieved those values from the MongoDB database query, then I can just go and grab that here. So I have the role ID array. Uh, what I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new file here, a new tils, a new file, which is called format string for discord.js. Got exports. Um, so I'm going to accept two arguments for this um, thing here. So I'm just going to go string array. I'm gonna accept those two arguments. And now I'm just going to, so this function is just gonna be used for print. So let me just go let formatted string. Okay. So this one will be just for, so we're gonna take in two arguments, just the format type. So it could be uh, channel or role. And we're just going to kind of just give it just grab one of those arrays and just format it properly. So let me just if format type equals 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 channel. So we have three equals because that means that it's doing type equivalence as well as uh, just saying it was this. Because if you just have two things, um, for example, if you have um, 12, this would be true, right? This, this here would be equal to true. However, if you do type equivalence, this would be false, right? Because you have three equals, that's the difference. Okay, so let me just format type and I'll just call this, I'll put in a string here, I'll just say channel just to be consistent. Let channel ID string. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just type this in. So what I'm doing here is I'm just initializing some variables that I'll be using. So I'll just use a simple for loop here. I'll go for temp channel ID string for string array of string array. So I'm just going to be going over that loop, this array that's been given here. So I'm just going to use temp channel ID string equals this. Okay, so just remember again, what, why are we doing this? We're using the hashtag and the less than sign because this is the formatting for a channel. Okay, so again, if we look at the documentation here, we can see that for a channel, it's this thing. So you have the left, the left angle bracket and then you have the right angle bracket as long with the hashtag symbol right there. Okay, so let me just continue that. I'm gonna call this temp channel ID string. So what we're doing is we're just equating this to itself, but we're just adding this in front of itself. And now we're just gonna add a space in between actually, just to be for formatting purposes. Otherwise they'd all be clumped together. And channel ID string equals channel ID string plus temp channel ID string. So this is pretty much just concatenating this thing here. So. For example, the first one might be, I don't know, one, two, three, four, like something like this. And then it's gonna, first of all, process this into this step here. So it's gonna go like this. Um, and then it's going to add the next string on top of that afterwards, you know what I mean? So throughout the entire loop, it's just gonna keep adding to this empty string. So it's gonna have this here, and then it's gonna have the next one, maybe something like one, two, yeah, I don't know, something like that. So it's gonna just format it just like that, right? That's that's how, how we're, we're kind of envisioning this path to be. So that's good. And now we're just going to um, formatted string. So formatted string is this variable that we initialized here. So I'm, and we're going to be using that and returning that variable, right? So let me just return that variable, return, Okay, so return formatted string. Okay, so formatted string equals to uh, channel ID string. Okay, so I'm gonna be kind of lazy here and I'm going to actually just copy this. But honestly, I think, I guess you can just change 
whatever this divider is if you wanted. However, I think that's actually more confusing because if you just have this in two parts, so for example, this could be a roll here, then this just makes a lot more sense to me because it just has each, each use case, it goes into there and it goes into there rather than uh, you just change it by this thing here. This one we can clearly delineate uh, and it's very understandable from a code formatting point of view. Okay, so code structure point of view. So this is Discord's channel string formatting. I'm just going to copy this over here. And I'm just going to change this to roll string formatting. And I'm just gonna change all these here to roll ID string. I'm gonna change all these mentions of channel to roll. I know it's a little bit of a pain, but wait, let me just change this. Okay, so then this should be roll ID. Roll ID string, uh, roll. Temp roll ID string, and then this one should be roll ID string as well. Okay, and then this one would be row ID string. Okay, so that should be fine now. We're just checking that they're all correct by double clicking on them. So you should see all copies of it through there. So if we spelled anything wrong, it'd be easy to see. Okay, so we've done that now. Um, how do we do this here? That should be fine. Yeah, also yeah. And yeah, we're gonna write an else statement. So this is gonna be else if, sorry, it's else if, not just if, because this is, if it fails that one, then it's gonna to go to this one here. So then you can also put in any of these other ones. For example, if you wanted to put in a user, you could do that special formatting. But just for this one here, I, we only need channel and role. That's why I'm only gonna make two use cases. And I'm just gonna make an error out here. So I'm just going to throw an error. I'm gonna go, um, first of all, I'm going to return something. Otherwise, I don't want to return nothing, so I'm just going to return invalid so I can easily debug this if I ever need to catch that use case. Um, and also, I'm going to throw a new error. So this should crash the program anyway, but just to be 100% safe, I did want to put in something into there. So format type, format type. There we go. So we've kind of formatted that. That should be good. So how do we use this function that we just created um, in our for example, add channel and roll. So all we need to do here is we just need to find it again. So we, we, we just do it like how we did it previously, right? So we just go const and then we're just finding this. Um, so I'm just gonna call it discord string format as the function name. And I'm just going to require, so how do we get to that, right? So we're trying to get to this one, which is right in the utils folder, right? So I'm just gonna go up two folders. I'm gonna go up to, so this is, you can see how this one is in a completely different folder here. So I have to go up this folder into mentions, sorry, into commands, and then I have to go above into source. So again, same thing as the above thing. So I need to go to there and I need to go to which folder? Utils. And I wanna to go to a format string for Discord, right? It even, it even has a autocomplete actually, format string for Discord. So I just press tab to autocomplete. Now you can see that I've got that function now. So what I can actually do here is pretty simple. So I can just use this function now as just like as a normal function. Um, and I can use that just by importing that file above. So I'm just going to do that. So if I just review what I did, so I just literally went to here and I said channel, right? And channel and role is the first argument. So channel or role. So I'm just going to put in for this first one, channel. And then we put in the uh, string array that we want to process. Channel array said, let opt uh, channel ID string. Okay, and same thing with the above one, but I'm just going to change that. So I'm going to call it roll ID string. I know I'm using a kind of a mix of it. I technically shouldn't be using camel case and um, the um, underscores, but honestly, close enough. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> um, 
it makes it easy to see, so whatever. Um, anyway, so let's see. Next thing we are doing is we are just adding interaction, this reply here. Okay, so. I want to put this reply here. And instead of, uh, so set notifications channel, channels, channels. So this one is updated to, and I'm just going to, cause I know the formatting here. So I'm just going to use a backslash N. So this is just going to be a new line character. And then I'm just going to put in, instead of this, just the upt channel ID string here. Um, and then now I can just put in and the roles to notify to, and then backslash N. Um, I forgot about upt role ID string. There we go. Okay, and then that's pretty much it. I'm just checking against my reference here. That looks good. So I'm just gonna erase all of this here. Now we're good. So that's pretty good. Interaction.reply. So now all we need to do is, let me just add an else. So else would just be if there's an error. So I'm just gonna explain this as, okay, so there was an error. with the uh, with retrieving configuration from database database DB okay cool so that just basically something like that so this is just the error message and that's fine okay so that's all good now I'm just going to save this and I'm actually going to try it out so let me just bring up this window. And let me just press the up arrow and just press to get the previous command, press enter. And let's try this out. So if I just go to my actual thing now, so if I just use add channels and roll, I should see the actual channels and like the full length of it now. <laughs> okay, I forgot. I evidently forgot a part of it. And the rolls, I didn't even do that properly. So let me just go back to so it is using the um, thing, but it's just not doing it correctly. So let me just have a look here. So I forgot to add this string part here. And second of all, this one should be an and and an at. So let me just try that again. So I saved the file, so node, nodemon kind of just uh, started it up again. Um, okay, and let me just try that again. So add channel and roll. And let me just add the discussion and the blue channel. Uh, blue roll, and I should be seeing this. Okay, beautiful. So you can see that it's now working. So it's basically just going updated notifications channel to general discussion and the roles to notify to blue and red. So is really well formatted. I've already tested this out, so I knew exactly what the formatting I needed. So, but yeah. So that's pretty good. Um, other than that, I'm just going to press Control C here. And we just have two final files to code, okay? So keep it up. Um, let's just add a one file here. And I'll just call this um, a clear notification channel. .js. Okay, so here I'm just going to just copy my set uh, notification channel uh, thing here. And I'm just going to paste it in here because, you know, that's just quicker. And instead this time, I'm just going to have clear notification channel. Okay, so I'm just going to um, Okay, so this is going to be removes existing removes the notification channel roles and channels. Okay, so now let's just say we don't need any of these uh, options anymore because, um, well, we just don't need them. So I can just delete it here because we don't need to know what 
channels they're trying to delete, we're just going to delete all of them, reset it to zero again. So just delete the thing from the database. Okay, so let me just delete this. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I didn't wanna delete that, I wanted to delete this. Okay, so I've got the guild ID string. Now I wanna delete the record for this. So want to delete the record for the guild ID, for the current guild ID. Discord guild ID. So I'm just going to just find this thing here. Well, I don't even need this console.log. Am I still console.logging that out? I still am under this. Let me just comment out that console.log because I don't really need it anymore. That was just for debug purposes, just to confirm that the guild ID string was correct. So I no longer need it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this clear and here's what we're gonna do. So I'm just going to await and instead of this, I'm gonna go delete one. Okay, so that's good. And it's just going to delete the guild ID string and that's all. Okay, so we don't really need any more. Um, okay. Um, and we're just going to say, oops, where, what am I doing? Const, yep. Okay, that's fine, yeah, no, that's fine. Why is this an if statement? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to reply to this by saying that it's been deleted. So cleared. Uh, cleared, successfully cleared the notification channels and roles. Okay, and then there was an error with the clear notification channels command. Okay, let me just check that that is all correct here. So it should be set. I just want to copy the exact name anyway, just for debug purposes. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, so let's just try that final one. And then we just need to do the actual main part, which is the part we're interested in. So now we're just going to uh, clear so I'm just gonna go to this bot here. Does it have it? <laughs> Sometimes it does take a, time, a bit of time to update, even though it says it's registered, but it doesn't actually register, which is a little bit, okay, there it is. Okay, so if I just go clear, uh, you can see that we said it's cleared. Let's go check um, the database here. So let me just refresh this. And beautiful, it's gone. You can see that the uh, record that we wanted to create is now deleted. Okay, so that's beautiful. So that's working as expected. Um, let me just try add a uh, channel. So add channel and roll, let's add um, stream chat and green, why not? Okay, so let's just check the database. Let me just refresh this. Okay, yep, so we can see we added these two here. Um, let's add in a new one. So let me add channel and roll. Let's add the general and the red. Okay, so yep, that's working as expected. And let's just check this out. So let me just refresh this. What's most important is this is just really doing a lot of testing and make, making sure it is turning out as how you expect. Um, so let me just try to add that one more time. So now let's try to add the uh, general and red here. Okay, so this should overwrite the previous one. So if I just reset this, if I just, um, how should I, uh, I'll just refresh the page. And this one should now just be an array of one element each. Yeah, so you can see that because I set it directly, it only has one element as well. We actually need to just do the events. We need to handle when this is happening, right? So what we wanna do is uh, just in this events uh, folder here, I wanna right click on the events folder, new folder, and I'm gonna call this a message create. 
Okay, so this is the event when a message is created in the Discord uh, server, right? So this is gonna be triggered every time there is a uh, message create. Okay, and we're gonna create this file called bot-notify.js. Let's let's just go from, from scratch. So or const, and I'll just require discord.js here. Um, so I'll require that package and I'll import some things from it. So I'll import the client and I'll import the message. Okay, so that, those are the two things that we really need. We're gonna import just the um, notification model here because we are gonna need, we're gonna actually gonna need both of these. So this one here, remember this one is the schema. So basically it's the, uh, uh, how it defines like that stuff should go inside the database. So it should have always have this kind of set of things inside of it. And this should be a string and it, this one should be an array and it should come with this value which is called raw ID array. That's what the schema does. So it defines exactly what data should be stored in the database. So I'm gonna copy both of these and this one, remember this one was the, uh, utility, the utilities um, formatting a string for Discord, right? So we're just gonna grab all, both of those as well. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to do this for auto formatting. So this one just allows us to get auto complete on these two things. Um, you'll have to ask <laughs> under control. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure what it does, um, but what it, what it does is it just adds auto complete um, to these variables. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put in this um, module.exports as per usual. Um, we're gonna go, uh, before I do, well, I'm not gonna put it, make it in async just yet because it is gonna be async, but I wanna explain why. Okay, so this is fine and we have nothing else here. Okay, so the first things first is we want to kind of make sure that this message is in the guild, right? So if the message is not in guild, then we don't want to reply to this. We want to, and if the message.author is not the bot, we want to return. Okay, so let me just stop this from running because that's really annoying. Um, but the reason why we need message.author.bot is because every time if you, you, you actually get an infinite loop because the bot starts responding to itself. Right, and you don't want the bot to respond to itself. You want it to resp respond to actual users. So basically, this one here, it, it uh, stops stops um, messages from other guilds. So other guilds, like other servers that the bot is in, from triggering the bot, because the bot might be in multiple servers at one time. Right, it might be in two or three servers. So you don't want the messages from one guild to kind of trigger this bot um, to write a message in another guild. It should be just the messages from the current guild, okay? Because the bot is kind of reading messages from all guilds at simultaneously, right? So all servers. Okay, so now let's just, uh, from other servers and the bot's own messages, Okay, so let's have a look here. So we're gonna we're gonna start doing a query here. Okay, so now this one's going to be the tricky tr tricky-ish query because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this and here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to um, basically have this here. So we'll be anding these two things. So I think we should be pretty uh, familiar with the guild ID by now. It's the guild ID string which we kind of need. So let me just create the let guild ID string. I'll make it a constant because this is not gonna change. Okay, so I'm just gonna go message dot um, guild dot ID. Okay, that's how we get that. And the channel here is we also need this, which is the channel ID string. Oops, sorry, this should, this should both be after this if message because this should be at the very top. So this is just the message.channel.id. Um, I basically just looked up the documentation for this here to find it. And okay, so we basically wanna check if, if what. So 
what does this query want to look for? This query is looking for, uh, so get uh, attributes of the current uh, message. Okay, so we're getting some attributes and now we're looking if the message belongs to a channel that should be alerted. So how do we know if it's a channel that it should be alerted? Okay, so let's have a look back at our Excel document. So it should be this server here. And the second thing is it should also be in this kind of thing here. So remember, if it's creative arts, like so for example, this channel here, creative arts, it should have both these two things equal together. So it's an and, right? So we want to use this MongoDB and query, and we just want to and. So what are we trying to and together together again? So let's look at the model, model, which is just this channel ID array. So we want to and and make sure, let's go back with that back arrow and the channel ID array. And we just want this, okay, so this one's a little bit tricky, so channel ID string. Okay, and yes. So right now what it's gonna do is it's just going to check if this channel ID string array is equal to the ch channel ID array, right? So that's not really gonna be the case. So let's just try to put that in our heads and let's have a look. So right now the channel ID array is gonna be something like this. So let's say it's gonna be these strings. It's gonna be one, two, three, like that, something like that. And then this other one, so that's the channel ID array. And we're trying to compare these two. So obviously if, let me just say that, because the message can only have one channel. It only belongs to one channel, right? So right now, are these gonna be correct here? Like, is this gonna be equal to that array? Is this array gonna be equal to that array? Obviously not, right? So, but we still want this situation to be like showing that this is equal. So we actually need to use this specific uh, thing, which is called all in MongoDB. Um, believe me, this was pretty hard to find during in the documentation. It was kind of annoying, but that's okay. And I'm also just going to convert this into an array by just adding the square brackets. So what this does here, if I just double check the bracketing, I think I have an extra bracket. I have an extra bracket here. Yeah, so it doesn't, you don't need this extra bracket here. Okay, so yeah. So, but we do need one bracket here. Okay, so let me just make sure that the bracketing is okay. So this one here. Okay, so this one here. It's comparing if any of these elements here in this array, uh, like if any of them include just this one element here with these, this all kind of thing. It does that because I've tested it out and I know it works. So let's just go with that. And now we have this query, we actually need to run the query. So we need to, we have, we've made the query, but as an object, but we need to run the query now. So let me just add this try catch block again. Remember, because we want to catch the error if there is a problem with this try catch. So let me just go try catch error and I'll just go console.log. So error with database query um, in bot notify.js um, for guild and channel ID. Okay, so then I'm just gonna print out the error here like that and I'm just going to reply to the message. And then I'll just say, there was an error. Okay, wait, I think I already have that somewhere else above. So I'm just gonna grab this from here. Okay. And I'm just gonna grab the bot notify. I'm just gonna go here. So instead of interaction.reply, we don't have an interaction here. We're just having a message because remember, this is just the message. We're grabbing this message from here. So message dot reply. And I'm just going to say there was an error with the bot notify command. Notify command, please contact the developer like that. Perfect. Okay, so let's just add like actually try this query now. So I'm just going to um, create a constant again. So constant notif, and I'm just going to await the notification channel. 
So I'm just referencing the model and I'm just going to um, find one again. Because what I could do here is I could look for just the guild ID string, right? If I wanted to make this uncomplicated, I could just look for the guild ID string, right? So I would, so if I had these two things, I would just be finding this record here, right? But then I would have to look inside this channel IDs array and compare it. So rather than that, I thought to myself that I might as well just put that into the query itself, right? I might as well put that into the query. So if you don't, if you don't want to do this, you can you just use the guild ID string and just say, yeah, it's going to work, right? And then you can just grab the values from that as we did beforehand. Remember, how do we grab the values? We literally just went this, like update channel array, updated document. So just this is the, the constant that we got from the MongoDB query. We just went dot channel ID array. So you could just do that and then just do a for loop over that and just do an if statement. That's one thing you could do, but I really suggest, well, like just for, with my approach, there's no right approach here. Um, I just use this. Okay, so I just, I just, I literally put it into the thing to be a little bit smarter, I guess. <laughs> um, but it might be more confusing. Um, anyway, so let's just go query. So I've now put in the query, and you can see that it has a red thing. Why is it red again? Because this query can take longer, so we have to make it an async function. So let me just add async to the front of this, and you can see that it is gone. Now let's keep if. So we need to say if it's successful, right? Because if it's not successful, so if there are no results, if there are results, it will return an object. Otherwise, it will return undefined object, undefined. So we're just going if notive. So this is if it is successful, if there are results. What we want to do is we want to just grab the role ID. So let role ID array. I haven't used this in this headline. No, I haven't. Okay, good. So, and I'm just going to go notif dot. Okay, so I want to grab the notification channel as well. So this one is role ID array, right? So that's exactly what I need to reference here. Like that notif dot role ID array. So it's getting the value from the, retrieving this value from this find one command. And now we are going to just, um, yeah, we're gonna use the role ID string. So remember that uh, function that we just created earlier for our convenience is this here. So I'm, let, let me just remind you again. So this discord string format, right? So if I look at format string for discord, so what, do I, what arguments do I need to put in for this to work? I need to put in a format type and a string array. Okay, so we've got that string array. So let me just go back to the bot notify. And so again, what is this? It's, it's a type of role, right? So we wanna put that in and we wanna put in the role ID array. Okay, that's good. Const notive message equals so one thing I want to do here is I wanted to send a push notification and also send the message content. Another thing I wanted to put in here in the middle is I wanted to also change the server nickname of the bot to the user so that it to the user that has just messaged so that it is the desktop notification shows the right username. But we'll think about that later. Let's just first finish this off. So this is just showing sending, send the message content. So this is gonna be message.content. And now what are we gonna follow up that with? We're going to go backslash n, backslash n, and for new for two new lines, and now I'm just going to print. I'm just going to print this raw ID string. Okay, so it's going to be all formatted super nicely. Remember, what are we going to see there? We're going to see pretty much like um, let me just go format string for Discord. We're going to see a string like this. Wait, so this one is going to be. Let me just change this just because. Um,
Okay, so we're going to see a string like this. Now I'm just going to put this into here. So that's what we're going to see. And yeah, let's just end with that one there. And I'll just, so that's the notification message, but we haven't actually sent it yet because we still need to go message.reply. And then we're just going to, this is what, what the notification message is. And we will just do this much so far. Okay, so let me just send this off and we will try that. Okay, yep, so we'll try this first. Uh, let me just bring this back online. And I'm just going to test this by starting. Okay, so it's the, we've set it to the general channel. So let me just try this here. Okay, so you can see that it's now working, right? So it's pinging with this, but let's add another role to it just so that this, to verify that this bot is doing exactly what we want to. So let me just add the discussion and let me add the blue role. Okay, so let me just add, so I go SDF just to test this out. Okay, you can see that it's working. It's doing both of them. Okay, and let me just test it in the general channel. So it's pinging both of those roles, which is what exactly what we expected. Let me go to stream chat and let me just type it in. So you can see that it's, it's finding that event, but it's not actually uh, ping, ping anything. It's not because it knows it's making that database query and it's doing that check. So it knows that's not correct. Okay, so now we've verified that's correct, which is great. But what we really want to do here is I really want to make sure that this message is deleted. Okay, so how do we make sure that this message is deleted afterwards? Because we would interrupt the flow of conversation. Um, delete the message afterwards in one millisecond. Okay, so let me just control C to, to stop that one there. Control C. And let me just, so you can just use a function here. So I call back function right here just as the easiest method to do this and just press, so just go send message dot delete. Okay, and you can delete it in one millisecond. Okay, one millisecond is the minimum. I wish that it could be faster, but that's the minimum there. So that's what I'm putting in as one. Okay, so now let's just see if this won't much work. So if I just go press the up arrow and press enter to run no daemon source index.js again, let's see how this works. So this is still working as expected. So you can see it's just being deleted straight away, which is really good, okay? So it means that whenever we're using this, it can now be used to ping people. So I'm just gonna bring this back just a little bit before we do the other thing there. So I wanna handle the at everyone actually. Um, let me just show you exactly what's the problem with the at everyone right here. So if I just go like this here and let me just set so add notification channel general, and I want to use the at everyone command here. So, and let me just um, remove the um, role from myself here. So I will just remove this red, this red um, role here. And let me just check this out. So you can see that it doesn't actually at, it doesn't mention or push notification here. So we need to make a special case to handle that. So let me just, uh, reverse and I'll just add the delete thing again, but I just want to handle this um, at everyone basically. Okay, so yeah, so we'll put it in the Discord string format, but we just need to add this in here. Let me just add this in as the uh, format string for Discord. Let me add in like one optional argument. Um, everyone role ID. And I'll just put it in as default minus one um, just because, um, and what I'm going to do here is if it is a role here, I want to do some extra processing. Let me handle. So because if it's a shared function here, it's a lot easier because I don't need to process it like all the time, which is just a little bit annoying. So handle the at everyone formatting use case. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go if if uh, everyone role ID
everyone roll ID is not specified. So basically we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're going to put this here. Um, is not specified, then operate like normal for string formatting. For roll, let's see, let's see, let's see. Now, else, so if we have, we have specified a and every one row ID. We have specified a then what do we want to do? Then we want to change the temporal ID string to at everyone. And it matches. So, and the current temporal string matches the at everyone role ID. Then we want to change it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to say another if inside here, which is a little confusing. I know it's a nested if, but we're just trying to match this. So we're just trying to match this to the at everyone role ID. So everyone role ID. And then we're just going to say that it's string equals to um, at everyone because this is the formatted one that we want to send through instead of the because at, at everyone doesn't actually this is not a thing and it doesn't actually ping people which is what we will actually want to ultimately do so otherwise we're just going to operate like normal again so that is also one of the reasons why I, I separated the formatting of it slightly because there's a special use case for at everyone. So I'm just gonna do it normally otherwise. Okay, and that will work. Okay, so now we just need to make some small notifications here, uh, modifications, which is for this one here, I'm just going to send in this. So this is a const everyone row ID equals to interaction. So this one is message dot guild dot roles dot everyone dot id okay so i'm just going to put that in as an optional argument here um so you don't always need to use it which is the good thing because if you're just doing like a channel here you obviously won't need to think about this here because we put it as an optional argument by just putting this already equals it's already equal to something so even if you don't put in something it's already going to be put in for you okay so and actually this needs to be a string <coughs> negative one. Okay, yep, so that kind of makes sense there. Otherwise, handle like it is a normal uh, role with formatting with Okay, cool. Okay, so that, that's fine here. We formatted that. Okay. Okay, so let me just go back to the add channel and roll because this one just needs one small update, which is just saying uh, okay, here. Yep, so let me just add this one here. Everyone, so const everyone row ID equals to message dot or interaction. Because why is it interaction here? Because remember, this one is um, interaction here. So I'm just going to go interaction dot guild dot roles dot everyone dot ID. Okay. And now I'm just going to put this into this one here. So this is basically a comparison. It helps do a comparison and checks if this is stored at any point. 
if, if the everyone if the everyone role is there and it's just going to change it so everyone role id changes at at everyone into at everyone that's what it does okay so i'm just going to put that into the other one uh, let me just go back to bot notify and let me just test this out Okay, let's test this out. So I'm just going to run this uh, bot here and I'm just going to run through this. So let me just uh, add notifications channel. Well, that is one problem because it isn't set on the other one, but that's okay. Let's see. And I just want to print out. So console.log uh, everyone role ID. I just want to see what does that look like. I'm guessing there's something that's probably gone wrong, so let me just see that. I just want to um, add channel and role, general at everyone. Okay, so everyone role ID is this, okay? And I just want to compare. Because there should be at some point right here. If so, it's not equal to negative one, so it should go into this here first, right? So let me just check that console.log. Just even just to find out that it's going into here. So let me just everyone row ID. Um, I just want to compare these two. Uh, uh, everyone, so everyone role ID. And let me just have a look here. Everyone role ID. So this is how we would troubleshoot it. We would just con start console logging stuff out. And yeah, so add channel. Okay. It didn't even go in there. Oh, wait. This should be equals equals. Sorry, my bad. This one should be equals equals equals. That's why it wasn't working. Um, because it should be... Yeah. Because this is a default value, and then we want this to be the other one. Um, yeah, that's my fault. I could see, because basically it wasn't having any console log out. So obviously I was doing something wrong. So uh, let's have a look here. Beautiful, beautiful. You can see now it's printing out exactly what I wanted. Um, so I'm just going to um, go back to my bot notify. I'm going to unstringify this. Um, and because it was already a string, it seems like, um, and I'm just going to go like this and then I'm just going to restart this and see if that works. That should all work now. Beautiful. So it's now adding everyone, um, as expected. Yep. So we're just seeing that it's comparing them and now I can get rid of those, uh, logs. So I'm just going to get rid of this log as a debug. I'm going to get rid of this as well. Okay, so let me just type in some stuff. And you can see now we've handled that special case of the and everyone. We want to look at just changing the nickname, as we said, right? So we want to change the nickname. Let me just control C to bring this out and let me just have a look in the bot notify. So we want to change the server nickname of the bot here, just message. So we want to change the username. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in this code. So I've already tested all this code, so I know it works, um, but it just took me a lot of trial and error just to, just, just uh, 
testing it out and console logging a lot of stuff out. Um, but, you know, so this is how to get the user, the, the bot user, right? So we're just going to get the message dot guild members dot cash dot get. And so basically what we're, we're getting the cash here. I know that we're, we're getting it in a really roundabout way. We're basically going to the message and we're going to the guild cash. So the current guild, so the current servers cash, and we're getting the client user ID. So we're, we're as in like, we're getting the user um, and we're putting in the client dot user ID. So that's how we get the, the bot user. I've tried using client, it doesn't work. So just use this one here and to get the bot user. Now we're gonna get the bot user nickname. Okay, so after that, we're gonna get the user display name. So here, I'm not gonna really, um, I'm gonna copy and paste this from my previous one here. So this is the documentation, right? So basically, it, it, we just go to this page here and I'm just gonna to go to it anyway, just so to inform you exactly what it is. It does say old Discord, but that's actually how it is. So this, this one has no global name because this is using the old system, okay? So, or their username if they don't have one. So their username here is just literally um, this one up here, this Animanians Alt 2. Showing the bot user nickname. And we can also just go, um, yeah, we need to get the user display name. So message.author.display name. So this is just the, the user's display name. So basically the person who sent the message, we wanna get their display name, uh, which is basically just, again, either the global name, which is just their alias here. So the anime Yan kind of thing here, or it's the uh, username if they don't have one. And this is the safest one because you can either get the global name or the username, but if you get the global name, it returns an error. If you try to, it re returns undefined if they don't have one, if they're still using the old system, like my other account. Um, the username here, um, you can, but it's just not as good as the global name um, in general, just from what I found, okay? So anyway, let's just try this out and you'll see what I mean. So. And I'm just gonna just say like only set the username. Well, actually no, we'll do this afterwards. I'll show you what I mean, why why we're doing this. So now we're just going to use an await bot user dot set nickname, and we're just gonna use a display name. So we're just gonna set the current user our current user to the bot to this, and we'll just try this out. Okay, so let me drag this up right here, and we will start this code again. Okay, we connected to the DB and now let's just have a look here. This test server. Okay, so, so you can see now that it's taken, sorry, the global name is actually this one above, this anime Yan here. Um, but yeah, so you can see it's taken my name now, right? So when I do a desktop push notification, when you get a desktop push notification from this, it will now say anime Yan, right? So, it would actually just show the right person who sent the message, which is a really, really good thing. Okay. Um, yeah, that works. <laughs> I don't know I have much else to say about that. Um, however, there's one thing though, we're changing the username every time, right? It's just to be, just to be a, li a little bit more smart. We can just, just say if the bot user nickname um, is not equal user display name. Okay, so like if we have already kind of changed it, like why do we have to change it? Like if we've already have the correct one, we, we're not gonna change it again, right? It makes no sense, right? So let me just check that out. So I'm gonna say um, only set the username if it is different from what it is currently. Okay, so I'm just testing this out with another user. First of all, ping notifications. Wait, am I running the bot? <laughs> I don't know, it's not, it's not working currently, so. Yeah, I'm not running the bot, so let me just run the bot again. And then <laughs> let's try that out again. So basically I should be switching to, okay, so you can see now that it's switching and you can see that we're getting this push notifications just from random messages, right? Um, I can turn on desktop notifications. 
let me enable desktop notifications and let me just see. So you can see now that we're getting this ping which has the message and it has um, the notifications, right? So you can see that we're getting the right thing, which is absolutely great. And you can see that we have these, this is now operating like a group chat for more than 10 people, which is great. I just think it's awesome. I think it's awesome, um, but yeah. And you can see now the bot is now named Anime Nyan's Alt 2, right? So it's taking on the different uh, username. So right now, if I change it again, it will now turn back to Anime Nyan. So yeah, so that's pretty much the whole bot. However, there's one, one last thing that I really, really wanted to help you, I uh, just had to show you. And we're gonna actually host this online because the thing is you can just run this from your own PC. However, you'd have to keep your own PC running like indefinitely. And otherwise, every time you, you stop this or you shut down your computer, you hibernate your computer, this bot is no longer gonna work, right? So if I just, just you see, it no longer works. None of this works anymore because I've just turned off the application. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a git, um, I'm just gonna run this command, git init. Okay, so we've installed git earlier. So we, in, we've kind of initiated a empty, repo, uh, empty repository here. And I've actually also added this git ignore file which ignores the .env file here. That is good because if you're using the .env file, um, if you're pushing that to version control, other people will be able to see your MongoDB URI. They'll be able to see all these things about your bot, which you don't want to push, right? So you want to ignore that .env file. And the second thing you want to ignore is the node modules because these are just like, these are just uh, dependencies which you can install with npm, um, npm uh, install, right? So obviously you don't want to, be putting useless packages in your version control. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to say that, and I'm just gonna git uh, add dot. So this means to add everything to your thing, to your staging right now, right? So you can see that it's all been added. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go git commit m, a dash m, and I'm gonna go initial commit. Okay, so that's gonna commit everything to your local repository. But now we need to push this to a, a repository like that we see. Okay, so let me just um, go to um, GitHub. I'm not really gonna teach you how to create the token and everything. Um, basically, if you wanna create a token, you have to globally configure it, like there's a git global config. I'll put the command in the other thing, in, in the video description if it's really required, but you can just go to your settings and you would just go to developer settings and you would just I add like a fine grain token. I've added a fine grain token for myself. Whenever you ran a git clone command or a git push or anything, you would just run this, you put in your username, like your current username uh, for your GitHub, and then you put in the personal access token after that, after you've created that token, right? Um, you can just give yourself like all permissions for the personal access token and everything. Um, but yeah, I've already configured that, so I won't do that again. So just, you'll see this, so this will be your like um, your username here. I think it's like your email from what I know. And this is your access token. It might be your username, your actual username here. Don't quote me in that. But anyway, so now that's done. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to GitHub and I'm just gonna push it right here. So let's do it. Let's do this final part because this is how we kind of deploy it to production. So I'm gonna add a new repository here and I'm just gonna call it uh, YouTube um, Discord ping bot. Okay, um, now that's fine. And we're just going to make it a private repository and I'm just gonna create it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now you can see that we have these commands here. So it literally tells you the commands that you need to run. So I'm just going to grab my folder here. I'm gonna grab my thing. If I can just grab this here and I'm just gonna copy the commands one by one. Well, in fact, I can copy all of them. It really doesn't matter. Just copy all of these here and then just Go back here, right click to, and just go paste. So basically you're adding the origin, like so you're adding that there and you're pushing it to here. So if I just um, refresh this page here now, you'll see it's now all pushed, which is great. Okay, so we have this entirely pushed and now we can clone it from the AWS EC2 side. So let us do that final step here, so AWS, okay. You can use a Google Cloud Provider or Azure, it really doesn't matter, like, it's completely fine, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only reason why we're using this here instead of, if you have your own server, you can do that, 
but I'm using this because it's easier, right? It's just a lot easier. It's a lot easier to use um, an EC2. So you just register for your own account. It doesn't matter, you, you can get it for free. Um, we have like, so this is a free tier um, thing right here. So, and you can create multiple accounts as well, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna launch an instance. So I'm gonna change my region to US East one. Um, and before I do anything else, I'm just gonna go to my IM console actually. So let me just open up a new window, go to my IM console. And I'm just gonna create a role for, for SSM. Um, that's the only thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go to roles. So I'm in IM, right? So I just typed in IM, I clicked on that. And now I just clicked on the roles here. So I'm just gonna create a role here and I'm just gonna uh, create a, yeah, for EC2, doesn't matter. And next, and I'm just gonna attach the EC2, um, wait for role for SSM. Um, SSM managed instance core. Yeah, so I'm gonna attach this policy directly. Um, and I'm just gonna call this Amazon EC2 role for SSM. This just allows for uh, SSM access. So which is uh, this, um, it allows us to access the instance in just another way. It's optional, you don't need to do it, but it just makes our lives easier if we do need to debug anything. Um, and we don't have um, the private access key access, like the SSH key access. But anyway, so let's just keep going. So I'm just gonna launch an instance here in the North Virginia region, because we're still in US East one, right? Remember that we created our MongoDB instance in US East one. So I'm just gonna call this um, my Node.js uh, Discord. Okay, so you can see here that the T2 micro is free tier eligible. So it's, it's free tier for 12 months if you look at the documentation. Um, so just make sure you're, yeah, as long as you don't use more than this, like it's, it's completely free. It gives you one vCPU and one G, GB, like it's, it's one gig, gigabyte. It's not a gig, gigabyte out of curiosity, but yeah. Make sure, so the 2023 uh, AMI is completely fine. So let's just, yeah, the security group, groups. Um, uh, just for this one here, um, we're going to let it have access from anywhere, that's okay. Um, we will also need to change this here as well. Um, because, well we'll think, we'll think about that later. Okay, so I'm just gonna change this IAM instance profile to Amazon EC2 role for SSM, and that's it. So under advanced details, right? So under advanced details, change this IAM instance profile to Amazon IAM instance, uh, that role that you just created to allow for SSM access. Now we're gonna launch instance. Oh wait, actually we need to create a key pair. I forgot about the key pair. So do I have a key pair up here? Where is the key pair? A key pair login. Okay, so I don't have a key pair here. So I'm gonna create a new key pair real quick. Uh, I'm just gonna create it as a PEM key. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna create it as um, my um, uh, US, US East one uh, Linux key. So, I'm, so you can access this from PuTTY and from Windows, but really it's a lot, lot easier if you just use um, WSL2 which is, um, you can you can install it like this, like on the install Windows. So basically you just have to go to do it in PowerShell with WSL install and restart your computer. Um, that's just a better way to do it because it's just so much faster. Anyway, so we're gonna go back here. I'm gonna create a key pair here and I'm just gonna do download it to my downloads folder just for now. And yeah, so we're gonna be using that and we're gonna launch the instance. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to wait for it to come up. We can see it also has a public IPv4 address, right? So this public IPv4 address, while we're doing that, we're just gonna go back here, your network access here. So go, go to network access, and we're just gonna add IP address, and I'm gonna add this IP address here, and but with backslash 32, right? So we're allowing yeah, so they're just gonna be configuring MongoDB, so just to add that one specific IP address. I'm using backslash 32, so that just allows this one specific IP address. Okay, um, now, this one is now running, so let's connect to it. 
So I'm just gonna bring up my Ubuntu VM. So remember that's just from WSL2 that I just showed you how to install. Um, so what we can do is I can just go into here and I'm just gonna follow the instructions that I made myself for this um, Node.js. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna go from here. So I'm just gonna first of all connect to this instance. So I'm gonna click on connect and I'm gonna to go to uh, session manager. So you can see now we can use session manager if we wanted. This is the online kind of thing, but I really prefer uh, SSH. So you can, because we added that SSM managed instance core uh, policy, we can do that. But let me just copy this here. And I can just SSH directly into it. Oh wait, oops, I forgot to save the, the thing in the correct place. So let me just copy this here. So let me go to my Linux Ubuntu home and let me just put it into, yeah, here. Just anywhere here is really fine. So US East. So let me just try that again. I should be able to SSH into it. Oh, wait, wait, oh no, no, that should, should work because I have security group rules should allow me in. Maybe it's still, no, no inbound rules is all everything. So it should be allowing me in. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. You know what, I'm just gonna access this directly from SSM, lucky that we added the SSM. So I'm just going to connect to it directly instead of trying to mess around. Um, and I'm gonna use these commands here. So I already have the list of commands that I wanna run. So basically, um, this is using Amazon Linux 2023. Okay, so Amazon Linux 2023 uses DNF and uh, uh, yum as the kind of things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, uh, first of all, sudo dash s. So this is gonna switch me to the uh, root user, okay? And so then we don't have to prefix all our commands with sudo, which is super user do. Okay, so we can just go yum upgrade, update first of all. So this is gonna update all the packages. Now we can go yum uh, upgrade. Okay, so everything's done for that. So then now we're gonna use yum install git. Okay, and yes, and just type that in and just let it install. Yep, yeah, so what I, can, what I can now do is I can go yum install um, uh, node npm. And I'll go yes as well, because I want to install the npm, which is allows you to, is the package manager, which allows you to install stuff for Node.js. Okay, so that's good. Now what we're gonna do is I'm now going to we go back to my recent my recent um, repository here. So I'll just go to uh, my repositories, and I'm just going to go to this repository here. So this is a YouTube Discord pingbot, right? So I'm just going to press on this download button, this code button, and for HTTPS, press copy. And now we're just going to um, put it into here. Okay, so we're just going to go git clone, and you can see I'm just going to paste, right click paste. And that has git cloned it from here. Okay, we kind of messed this one up actually, so I, I kind of messed it up. Um, let me just do this again. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this git.git .git folder. I know what, what's the problem. So let's just go and let's go back to here. And we'll do this again. So we're gonna run through all those commands, git init again. So we're gonna create a new git repository. I'm gonna go git um, add dot to add all the files. I'm gonna go git um, commit dash m. So I'm gonna go initial commit uh, git. We're gonna add a different repository to it this time because this one was a private repository and it can't be pulled. <laughs> That's the reason why. Um, so let me just go YouTube, Discord, ping bot tutorial ping bot tutorial okay so let's make this public this time and let's just go create a new repository let me just change this license doesn't really matter uh, let's create repository okay so let me just add all this here so I'm just going to put this into here I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go paste
Okay, so let me just refresh this now. now. I should be able to pull this directly, I think. I don't even think I need need the Git authentication, I think. So if I just go back to my systems main, and let me just try that again. So, wait, should I? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I need to, this one here. So I, let me just, so I'll just use this here. I'll copy. So from this new public one, this is a public repo. And let me just do this here. So I shouldn't need to, from what I know. So let me just right click. So click clone, right click paste. And let me just try that. Okay, yeah, so finally, it's kind of done it. So anyway, so let me ls. Well, that is massive. Um, that's not what I was expecting. Um, can I cd into... Um, so let me just room. RF uh, YouTube Discord bot because I don't want to put it into right into here because that is a little bit messy. Um, oops, so let me just remo remove this. So let me CD into this and this LS here. Okay, yeah, so I've CD'd into the home directory, which is CD change directory into the tilde directory. And now I'm going to git clone again. So let me just, if I can just git clone by pressing the up arrow. Um, and let's do that one more time. So I've grabbed that. So now we have this kind of folder here, right? So what I'm gonna do here to run this is pretty simple. I'm just going to, first of all, go into the directory first. So I'm gonna cd into YouTube. So I press the tab to complete that. So I change directory and I'm just gonna go npm install. Okay, so it's gonna install all the packages because before we didn't have the node modules package. Um, okay, yeah, so it says that we should update the NPM version, why not? Um, so I'll just copy that. I'll right, so I'll, I'll right click this and I'll go copy and I'll just paste it just because they advised me to update, so I'll update anyway. But it's not a big deal, um, but let's have a look here. Okay, so let's just test that a uh, node works. So let's just go node source index.js here. Okay, an invalid token was used. Ah, yes, yes, because the .env file was not put across, right? So let's just have a look here. So if I just ls here, why well, ls lsof. So ls means to list all files and I'm going to lsof just gives all the flags. So you can see we don't have a .env file. So let me just create that real quick. So I'm just gonna go vim.env and I'm just going to really quickly um, just add um, that .env file right here that we have just created here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna go .env, copy this, and I'm just going to um, paste it across. So I'm just gonna go, uh, so press the, you can see I'm using the colon there and I go set paste to set it to paste mode and I'm gonna right click and paste. Okay, so we can see there, is that everything? That is everything. Great, so I'm just gonna go escape here and I'm just gonna go use a colon WQ just to save that file. Now let's try that again. So we wanna just wanna make sure that this node source index.js is actually working. Yep, so you can see it is working here. So I'm just going to try it out one more time. Let's just see that it's not actually active here. It's not active here. You, see, you can see it's it's running directly from that server, which is great. So you can see it's running directly from there. Um, so that's great. Um, but this is still not going to work if we exit this SSM session. So let me just Control C for one second, and we're just going to install one more package, which is the PM2 package. To easily do this, is go npm install PM2. G, so that, that will install it globally, okay? So, and then, yeah, so this will allow it to, to persist past various things, okay? So pm2 start uh, app.js, okay? So, um, if we just do this here, 
So it'll, wait, what? Oops. So PM2 LS, let me just do that again. Okay, so it's saying that it, is, it didn't find it. So remember, it's in the source directory. That's why it wasn't finding it. So source index.js. Hello, uh, PM2 start. Okay, start index.js. Okay, so that's now online and it will work even though we quit this SSM session. So let me just have a look here. Yep, that's working as per normal. And now let's just have a look here. So because PM2 lists just lists all the thing, the processes. Yeah, so we use the PM2 startup command, sorry. So then this will, this will happen like even if we restart this machine, it will still do the same thing. Um, and now, so let's just PM2 LS real quick. Yeah, so it's all running. So we don't really need to care, but there's a few other commands you can do like PM2, I'll just show you exactly what the commands I am running are. So like the PM2 save and other things, right? Just to save your current configuration for your PM2 LS. Um, so if it ever if it ever like restarts, but basically there's there's documentation on that. You can just look up the PM2 package, uh, PM2 package. Um, but the important thing now is we can just quit this SSM session. So I can just literally close this here, and let's let's have a look here. Okay, so we can see that it's still working. Okay, and it'll be working 24/7. And this is completely free, and you can turn off your computer. It's still going to be working. Okay, so that's great. And let's just add it to our Let's say that we have like a deployment and we just want to deploy it to another server because we want to, this is our test server. Let's just deploy it to an actual server now. Let's just go to Discord developers and let's go OAuth2 uh, URL generator back to this discord.com developers application. So again, you just go to developers applications, you go back here and then you go into the OAuth2 URL generator and we're just going to change this to bot and just give it administrator permissions, just copy this and then you can literally just add it to any other server. So let's just add it to this server. So I'm just gonna go inside it here and I'm gonna add it yeah, to this Discord bot deploy server. Okay, I'm gonna go authorize and I'm gonna just test this out as well. Okay, we're here. So let me just, so let me just first of all, test that it's not doing anything weird. So this bot setup here, let me just um, add channel and role I'm gonna add the general and I'm gonna ping the at everyone role, why not? So that's the only one that I'll do. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on here and you can see it's working perfectly. So this can be deployed to a number of different things. The only downside that I've just spotted, like just from my testing is just that um, uh, MongoDB Atlas can be a little bit, it only allows 100 connections, okay? so. Um, to that database. So if you have more connections, it can't do that. So we'll see if you're really interested, I can create another tutorial on how to just create another instance, like from a separate, you can, you can literally just create another instance um, in another, uh, another AWS account for free for a, a, um, for a MongoDB database. Okay, so this MongoDB database will allow you like if you, if you install MongoDB community to that, to that um, instance, then you can literally connect to that instance there. Or you could install MongoDB community to this as well, because really this one here, it's not being used a lot. You can see here, it's not much, okay? So it's just a little bit, really just a little bit here. Like it's not that, it's, it's really not that high the usage here. And it's listening on both servers here. And you can configure any roles you like, and that's it. So thank you so much for being here for this really long video. Um, you are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan, out.